It's the comic book show. It's the comic book show. It's the comic book show. Yeah. Okay. I will. Welcome, dudes and dudettes, to the comic book show brought to you by Twin Galaxies. This is where we've gathered an all-star cast of comic book experts to bring you this week's comic book news, reviews, previews, and discussions. Yeah, so I'm going to let everyone do their own introductions today no. because I just met you. Well, don't forget yourself. Oh, yes. I'm uh, Jennifer Zhang, the Asian one and also the girl one. Whoa. This guy said he'd pay me five bucks to do this. Worth. Comic books. Um, Worth it. Dude, choice. And, yeah. And, uh, and you? Is it me? Yep. My turn? Yep. Okay. Yep. Uh, hi, guys. I'm, I'm Lucas Ackerman, and I'm uh, president of the unofficial X-Men fan club. Um, I just say president, right? <sighs> yeah. I'm, I'm president of the... Uh, yeah. How many uh, how many people you had in that? We episode? have over 30,000 members. Whoa. Um, I'm hoping to get another one today. But, uh, yeah. So, guys, if you're interested, uh, write me. Uh, we'll maybe talk about it later. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> Step off, Dweevoid. I'm Jonathan. Yeah. I'm the Triple Lindy Dive Champ, and uh, I love comic books. <laughs> I don't read anything that doesn't have pictures in it. <laughs> <laughs> I like pictures, too. I'm Wes. How are you? It's good to see you today. I'm uh, editor-in-chief of Prima Choice what? newsletter. We talk about choice babes. This guy knows what I'm talking about. You don't know what I'm talking about. Oh, and yeah. uh, all the geeky stuff, you know that, you know that part, right? <laughs> Dweeb. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty cool. Check it out. We got a, we got a ring that you could buy for me. It's like forty dollars. That's a lot. Forty. And I'm Matt Hiscox, creator, founder, and president, and all the other things of uh, the Mile High Star Trek fan club. If you guys are in Colorado and interested in joining, be sure to send me a letter. Uh, Self-addressed stamped envelope will get you the first month's newsletter. Cool. Oh, interesting. Captain Kirk and the Adventures wait, of Star wait. Trek. Do you have a ring? We don't have a ring, but maybe someday. I mean, yeah, I guess. Well, we've got a lot of cool stuff for you today. Uh, apart from all the usual stuff that these dweebs talk about, um, we're also going to show you some interviews for um, some comic book creators. Some yeah. People that are really excited a about big this. deal, according yeah. to this guy over yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, should we get started? Totally. All right. Yeah. <laughs> well, what's the first segment? Straight up now, tell me. First segment is the Daily Planet. As always, we bring you all of the news about your favorite comic book characters. All Who right. wants to kick us off this week? I believe I am. All um, right. So Marvel announced plans to start the Marvel Action Universe, which will air the episodes of the previously announced cartoon sero series Dino Riders and RoboCap, along with reruns of the previous Spider-Man cartoon and episodes of Spider-Man and his amazing friends. Uh, look for the Marvel Action Universe to premiere this October. Check your local listings and times and for, for times and station. Hold up. RoboCop as a cartoon? I no way. That was the most violent movie ever, and that's why it ruled. Oh, as a cartoon, this is totally going to suck. Just my thoughts. I, I mean, we got the first preview here. I mean, it looks pretty awesome. <laughs> it looks lameoid. Look I, at that I, thing. I don't know. I mean, is he fighting a dinosaur? Dude, yeah, this is wackadlicious. I would venture the dinosaur is probably from the Dino Riders. Yeah. Which, yeah. I got to admit, I'm excited for Dino Riders. I think that sounds awesome. Like, guys riding dinosaurs... Battling in the past, this sounds amazing to me, and you know, I don't have anything better to do with my Saturday morning, so I am all for Dino Riders. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty excited for Robocop, but I gotta say, I'm still really excited that they're re airing Spider Man and his amazing friends. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm gonna be awesome. No that's what I'm way, most excited dude. for. Dude, Robocop should be an adult movie, it shouldn't be a cartoon. If you want to do Robocop right, give him a jetpack. You heard it here first. <laughs> that's science. That's not so That's not gonna happen. Give him a jetpack. Look, a robot man was hard enough to believe. No, I mean, and also a movie about dinosaurs and people in the same place. It's stupid. No one's going to no It's gonna not a movie. That. It's a cartoon. A cartoon? Well, I'm not listening it's to you, It's just lame, man. bro. It's That's just not dumb. science. It's just dumb. You guys are a bunch of... No boys. movie They're with people and life. dinosaurs in it is going to make any freaking money. I'm any telling money. you that right now. No cartoon. I, Put it in I, the calendar, bro. I'll be tuning in. 
I'll be checking my local listings for this. Well, I'm sorry, but I've got a life, which is why this is majorly suckage, because I may be the only one who liked this movie. Superman actor Christopher Reeve said recently, I was disappointed with the negative reaction for Superman 4. Not for me, Chris. Which probably means we won't be returning with another installment. I will cherish the time spent and the people I've met along the journey. Superman 4, Quest for Peace, only made $15.6 million at the box office. Only? That's a ton of money. Yeah. That's a lot of money. With a so budget of budget. $17 million. That's pretty expensive, though, bro. Oh, $17 million? Well, the fight on the moon. Dude, Nuclear Man looked tight, though. Like it really hair. bodacious. Oh, Which pretty much means that fans should stop holding their breath for Superman 5. That's whack. We went on to say that since he's no longer, he'll no longer be donning the red cape, he has much more time for horseback riding, one of his favorite hobbies. Eh, that's lameoid. He's given up the cape and cowl to ride horses. Nah. Something's wrong with I, that. I love hor horseback riding. I, I think it's a really great sport. No way. You yeah. need to get yourself on a surfboard. <laughs> you want to, like, ride dinosaurs and horses and other girly shit. And you... Don't. This pisses me off. I want to ride girls. So what are we looking at here? Is this is this him and his family? Yeah, with his family. Yeah. yeah. Uh, He's doing his downtime. Superman. Aww. Enjoy your downtime, Clark. I guess he's not so super anymore. <laughs> I feel like he's gonna get really lazy. So after this, uh, after the Grody reviews, director George Lucas uh, is still hopeful for a Howard the Duck sequel. Please, bro. This explained my childhood. Oh my god, according to the film's writers, Will Willard Huck and Gloria Katz, Katz went on to say that Lucas thinks that the first film will be seen in a better light than it's, than it's been at this time. No word on if Universal is behind the sequel right now, or if a script is even in the process, but we'll keep you updated so don't miss a minute of future episodes yeah. of my newsletter and this show. What's, what's the show? It's a comic book show. And this show the show with comics. So I'm sure. sorry, but you better have a sequel because that movie ended with a duck playing an electric guitar and oh it ruled. Oh my god! Yeah. 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 Don't hang awesome. him. Oh, bro. sorry, bro. It was pretty good. That yeah. movie sucked. I don't know what's wrong with you guys. That was quite possibly the worst movie of the past decade. Make your I'm own talking duck movie, I'm all surprised that it didn't bro. make any money <laughs> because it was terrible. No. Talking ducks, talking turtles, you heard it here first, big business. You want talking yeah. turtles, we'll go back to Ninja Turtles, and we'll make a movie <laughs> yeah, yeah. out of that. Okay, look. Because, come on, the animated series. <laughs> no, 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 no. There's no way in hell no no, movie I ever want to see it. No. And TMNT belongs in comics, in cartoons, no movies. Thank you very much. Put a stamp on it, mail it. In, like, 30 years, we're going to look back at this episode, because we'll be famous by then. And we'll be like, what came out and got huge? A talking duck? Yes. Or a, a movie about dinosaurs? Who the fuck cares about dinosaurs? So I won't be looking back in 30 years because I'll be dead. Live fast, die young. <laughs> I like, it. I like I his it. thought process. But like seriously, it. Howard the Duck sequel? No way. Not going to happen. Uh, to the local viewers who are watching us on public access, I put my word to it. There will never be a Howard the Duck sequel. We're never going to see that trash again. And I'm telling you, there's going to be five of them. Uh, Do you not know? like me? About what uh, this is about? We're making this personal. With the ducks. I think I'll put money down on that. I think I'll put money down on that. I'll give you a free I'm ring. Put down on that. I'd be willing to bet... Ten bucks this week's allowance. Whoa, Ten bucks. Uh, uh, that, that's that there will never be another. Too rich for my blood. Yeah, yeah, I'm out. Yeah, I'm out too. Like, you know, too rich. I think how the duck will make will make it huge, and he'll be a big star someday. Dude, when that stuff hits the local uh, shops on Beta Cam, it's gonna be a number one rental. Oh my god. I love you heard it here first. Well, speaking of big hits, New World Picture and Marvel announced plans for a Punisher movie. <laughs> this film will be filmed in Sydney, Australia, and it's expected to hit theaters in the summer of 1989. The role of the Punisher has yet to be cast, but for this month's issue of Rolling Stone, reports are coming in that Swedish actor Dolph Lundgren... Do oh, Dolph yeah. Lundgren. He's a dude from... Uh, yeah, no, okay. yeah. Uh, he's he's He-Man. He oh, yeah, he was, uh, he was recently seen as He-Man in Masters of the Universe, nah, is being considered for the part. Do you guys think he would make a good Punisher? Yeah, he's I, a really good actor. He's no hard to I talk. don't know. That, that blonde hair, I mean... You know Punisher who they should have gotten? Hair. They should have gotten black the dude hair. from Remo Williams, Fred Ward. Mm. That movie was huge. Oh, Remo Williams, Fred Ward, you heard it here first. That should be the Punisher. Oh. None of this guy. I'm sorry, but Punisher is USA all day, every day. Don't even film it in Australia. You got to have dude, an American Jonathan, in the world. Jonathan, Jonathan, my, my pants just got tighter. I know, bro. I can oh, feel it. I can God, feel the quake gonna, and bake. I'm going to show you later. I don't know. I saw Masters of the Universe. It's going to be hard to buy it. Master of the Universe is a very good movie. That's why you can rent 
Yep. Hey, Ooh. check this out. The Cosmic Key. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Jennifer, you got up. more news for us? Do I? You do. It'll cost you extra. Oh. Oh. oh, me love comics long time. <laughs> Took a lot of sexual attention. All right. There's a lot of money being exchanged behind closed doors All right, right I'll now. Read, I'll read this <laughs> nerd crap. Okay, so we finally have our first look at the upcoming Superboy television show. Oh, gag me. Um, here we see John Hames Newton as Superboy and Stacey Hayduck as Lana Lang. It's also being reported that the series is plans of, being, of bringing an actual actual comic book writers on board to pen upcoming episodes. Superman comic book editors Mike Carlin and Andrew Heifer are expected to contribute to the show as well. Superboy is expected to begin airing this October on CBS. Wow. Look at his pants. I think that suit looks pretty good. <laughs> it looks good. I that think looks the show's really gonna good. Be awesome. Yeah, awesome. that's going to be a good show. I spent a lot of money on that guy, suit. Look at him. Yeah. He's like, hey, don't do stuff. I'm Superboy. And the girl's like, yeah, that's yeah. right. Superboy, hold me tighter. If I, was, if I was in Superboy's arms, I would say this. I mean, if I was Superboy, I would say. What? Yeah, no so, way. Right? I, I, I heard you, bro. Right? Yeah, no, you know what I mean? I think what, what he's scared Superboy. of there is ending up like Helen Slater in the Supergirl movie. Shh, that was. Best stupid. thing about that movie? Her. Yeah, because I like girls. And guys, I gotta say, I'm really excited that they're actually bringing on comic book writers yeah. to work on the series exactly. too. That lends like a whole legitimacy to this that's I don't see never been that seen in any of these mediums. Before. What could go wrong with that? I, nothing. I mean, look at the suit. It looks like it's right out of the comic this, books. I guarantee you, this is gonna run at least five seasons, at least. But again, like, look at how she's holding him. Like, he looks so strong. Like, I would totally. Yeah. Yeah, you're kind of hung up on that. How about reading some more news? So, if Superboy was uh wasn't enough for you warner brothers television let let it be known that another superman cartoon series is in the works and this series will be the third animated superman cartoon uh and each episode will be split into two stories comic book writer marv wolfman has written the pilot episode and will be the head story editor for the series the series titled just superman that's not just it's just soup it's just Period. Use quotes. Like, oh, quote. Yeah, it's, no. It's titled Superman. It's titled Super. It's just Superman. Not just he. What he said. You got it. And is expected to premiere in September on CBS. Yeah. I am thrilled for this. I think this is going to be amazing. Yeah, Marv Wolfman is the man in comics right now. And I am thrilled that he is going to be... You're eating that paper. I am thrilled that he is going to be working on this TV show. Do we have a picture? No, because it's not out yet. Is, so. is Superman holding like a young woman? Uh, maybe. All right, we'll just... Okay. But I heard that uh, Ruby Spears is helping produce this series, so it's going to be... I am I'm totally on board with this. Wow. This is, this is going to sound amazing. Sounds so. hot. Sounds bodacious. Are you... Is that a cat? Yeah. He likes to strum. All right. Well, okay, guys, I got some very exciting news. In fact, I can feel the nosebleed starting to come on. It's it's really good, guys. Okay. So, following the success of the X-Men's yeah. brief appearances on Spider-Man and his amazing friends, Marvel Action Universe executive producer Lee Gunther said uh, that they've started production on an X-Men cartoon series. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Um, uh uh, they said that they've hired uh, writer Larry Parr to write the pilot episode, which uh, will see Kitty Pryde join the X-Men, while Magneto and his brotherhood of evil mutants cause havoc for the X-Men. We said to look for the pilot to premiere sometime next year during the just-announced Marvel Action Universe. Do you okay. want to uh, change yeah. your Tell pants? Your head back. Yeah. Tell your head back. Yeah. Tell yeah. your head back. Okay. A lot of viscous yeah. fluids is coming uh, out of this guy, guy right now. Um, I'm excited to see this, uh, but I don't think an X Men cartoon series will ever ever, ever happen. Work. If it does, be like, no. If it does, no. it'll be canceled. That'll never work. It'll be canceled it after be. like a season or two, and then some dweeb no will create this like way. like this group of people like that try campaign. to like get it back. Those and it will be the saddest thing you've ever heard. Well, guys, what, what they need to do is like a Teen <laughs> Titans oh, series. Uh, like that's better than X Men. I agree. Teen Titans is better than X Men. I love teenagers. Are you, I think, are you just like Super Bowl, I think Titans could look worse. great as a TV show. A live action TV show, though. But. Oh, yeah, that'd be great. Like, Young Mutants as a live action TV show would be totally cool. Why can't we do that? Let me ask your opinion on this. What do you think about, like. Great and news. I'm just coming up with this now. What do you think about, like, a group of teenage trillionaires? And they're like, they can do anything they want. I can't even imagine what a trillion dollars looks like. Like I mean, Richie Rich? Like, these teenage, Richie Rich? Like, like Richie Rich, but they would be like, like they'd be like a team. Of of people like of money of green of green money of a green team 
I'd people. be into that, but I'm not selling it? my life rights. Oh, <laughs> that was really it. If it's like more guys like that, then I think yeah. that's definitely a no. <laughs> He's gonna like it. I know it is. I'm gonna write it. Matt, Ridiculous. But I, I think I mean, we're like, serving. The is problem, this guy okay? I, I'll, I'll be fine. fine. It happens all the time. The this is, this is usual. No, he, no he, that's not my tab. Like it, it's, that's not my tab. It's like anything X-Men. That that I just, I, I can't control it. I don't but know. I mean, like, to, to quell the excitement for the X-Men show, <laughs> like, which X-Men are they even going to use? There's like 50 know. million of them. So are know. they going to use, like, the current team? Are they going to use the know. retro team? Too like, many X-Men. I, I, I really hope, I mean, they talk about Key to Pride, so I'm guessing it's going to happen, you know, around the time of uh, the Dark Phoenix saga. So, um, have you ever, like, seen boobs? Well, yeah. In real life. And you better not be talking about us, too. Oh. There were duck boobs in Howard the Duck. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Another reason that movie yeah. ruled. Oh, I mean, I, I, I five sequels. Yeah. You heard it here first. That counts. That's the best. I heard. No one, I didn't see that it. That counts. Right. Yeah. That's Matt, coming off my tab. That's right. I think it's time for you to hang ten. All right, well, the DC Superpowers cup holders have started being distributed in Burger King restaurants. With what? purchase of a soft drink, you can get Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, or the evil dark side to hold your cup for you. Burger King is advertising oh, yeah. the cups with the cost of $1.19, but prices may vary in your neighborhood. Collect all four where, while they are available. I can tell you guys down the street, they're actually $1.29, so they're oh, wow. a little bit more expensive uh -oh. here. But they have all four. They also have the, uh, the toys have rolled out, so if you guys are buying the, the little kids meal, you can get the toys. There's an Aquaman float. There's a, a room sticker that you can put on your room, oh, the wow. label, it's your room. Um, there's Keep also... You're like really into these superpowers. Dude, there. I have all of them at home. There's a, a flicker coin that's got Superman on it. Um, and believe it or not, they're actually coming out with variants of the cups. Some of them have the stamps for Burger King on it. Some of them don't. So, guys, if you guys get a chance to find any of this stuff, be sure to pick it up because it's going to be worth money. These no, things wait. are amazing. Do, uh, do the audience home um, public ask to see what we're seeing? Yeah, the they get to see that same picture. I mean, look at, look at this guy in the dark side, right? Yeah. He's all like, I'm not going to do stuff. And then, like, ba like Batman, his underpants yeah, are, like, Dark really tight. Not wanna, okay, yeah. He does but not want to hold your cup. Just yeah, like a like, real like, superhero, yeah, you can force Darkseid to hold your cup for you. That's awesome. Huh. You can make him do that. I don't wow. know. Is that, a, is that Wonder Woman? That yeah. is Wonder Why Woman. Why is she in there? She's, she's doing kinda this. She's kind of messing up the whole... She's doing yeah, I, I don't feel thing. like there should be a woman she's, she's figure. Just kinda, no. Like, it should be the Flash, Green Lantern. Yeah, yeah. Like definitely someone. the Flash. We should make me but some like, pancakes. Definitely the Flash. She shouldn't be like holding my cup. She should be serving it. Because <laughs> <laughs> women are inferior. Yeah. Well, all of the, the Superpowers toys, unfortunately, have been canceled. Oh. Um, so the first three lines are out there. I would highly recommend picking them up. Uh, your chances are, are running out. So yeah, I know you're up. a big collector on those, too. I, I have all of them. Yeah. I've been fortunate enough to track them all down. I've been a yeah. huge fan. But, guys... They uh, shut the line down, so get them while you can. Well, that'll get me to stop going to Mickey D's. Mm. Okay, I think I'm all right. Okay, listen to this. Bill Bixby, executive producer and star of this past May's The Incredible Hulk Returns, says there are plans to follow it up. The TV movie has been titled The Trial of the Incredible Hulk oh. and has snatched up Gerald DePego to be its writer. Bixby went on to say that fans should expect to see a Hulk Daredevil team up in oh. this one. The oh Trial my. of the Incredible Hulk is expected to air on NBC oh next May. I got to tell you, oh Daredevil is going to sink this. It will never work as a TV series. I like, I ever. Like Do Hulk, not though. put Daredevil on TV. That is a lameoid character. Total ripoff. You want to do fighting ninjas? TMNT. That's how you do TV good, right. You know, Daredevil will never work as TV. Cool. But, but you know what I like about the Hulk? Is like he gets really angry and it's like it's it's intimidating, but it's it's like it's attractive, you know. And then like uh, his pants get all torn up. It's get ready for some radical Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles video game coming. Yeah. Away. That's pretty uh, awesome. Uh, some of these. Oh wait, I'm gonna do that again because you're distracting me with how grody you are. Get ready for some radical Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles video games, multiple coming your way, <laughs> following the success of the cartoon series, which you can now see on CBS. Yeah. Konami has announced plans for a video game for your Nintendo system that you can expect on store shelves sometime next year. Also, Konami says that there's also plans on bringing the Turtles to your local arcade. Now all we need is a movie. Oh, yeah, man. Good. That'll be that's awesome. I bet that game, though, like the cartoon, they got to make it for kids, so I bet the game will be really easy. The yeah. Nintendo yeah. game, it'll no, be agree. totally yeah. easy. I bet uh, that'll be probably, it'll probably be one of the easiest games on the system, but whatevs. 
It's, so it's cool. Turtles. You got to play it. And you know what? If it comes to arcades, I'm already popping those quarters. So I'm excited. I've been, I've been saving up my quarters for this, too. I think this is going to be mega exciting. But if it takes them long enough, I'm going to drop the quarters on buying the game for home. I, I, I'd rather have it at home to be able to play as many times as I want. I, I love the arcade. It's awesome. But at the same time, I go broke there pretty quick. So no, maybe I, I suck at That's what's going to keep them in business. Uh, you got to keep it at home. That's what will you know? keep the arcades in business forever. You know, I, right. I, I could, I'm going to get like it. Guys like this. Guys like yeah. this. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get like we'll get it, and like he can come over, and you can come over. My mom's cool with it. Like you can, we can play awesome, it. Can well, I, you can come if you want, but like if you want to come. No, I'm hanging out with you. What about Dweeb Boy? Uh, I like, I like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles a lot. So the bodacious Heather Locklear, she's, a, I, I would, yeah, I like it. I like ladies. Has been cast to play Abby Arcane in The Return of the Swamp Thing. The movie is starting production later this year, and will turn boys into men. Like me and this guy over here, and this guy over here, and not her. Uh, around the world, as it hits theaters next May. Uh, I love Heather Locklear. She's great. I do. She's I love great. the blonde bodaciousness. Oh, okay. But I gotta tell you, she does not have all of the acting chops that Adrian Barbeau from the first one had. I gotta tell you, man, when you get wet in that swamp, some of us want to pay our ticket prices to see certain things in the movie. Uh, Adrian Barbeau had everything. All right, so. Sad to see you go. All right, I'll go see this. She had a brother, right? But let's just move on. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, fans are still up in arms over the bogus decision to cast Michael Keaton in the Bruce oh, yeah. Wayne Batman this role. Bad. This is bad, dude. And we're worried now that Tim Burton is going to go down the Adam West campy Batman instead of the dark, brooding character we've come to love, especially with Frank Miller's recent The Dark Knight Returns oh, comic. Right. The film is set to Look begin filming this October at Pinewood Studios in England. Another Damn, weird choice. Why are they going to England? Mr. Ma oh, whatever. That's just enough time to change Warner Brothers' mind about yeah. where they're taking this movie, though. So we're encouraging you all to write into Warner Brothers and plead with them to reevaluate the choices they've made, especially with this casting. Now, guys, get out your pens and pencils and write this yeah. down. Yeah. Send your letters to Warner Brothers Studios, 4000 Warner Boulevard. Burbank, California, 91522. Guys, send them your letters. Tell them, who would you rather see cast as Batman? And let us know by sending your letters to us as well. Stay tuned. We'll give you our post office address box here towards the end of the show. Now, I got to say, I don't think this was the right choice. No, not at all. This guy looks like a fruitcake. I don't see him playing Batman ever. I, mean, I just saw Beetlejuice. And it was cool because Winona Ryder's a babe. She's a baby. But that was, to like, he's too silly. You know, like, he's a comedian. They should have gotten Timothy Dalton. That's who he should have been. Like, just imagine, Timothy Dalton, 007, as yeah. Batman. That's your guy Dude, right there. If we're talking about who it should have been, it's Mel Gibson, yes. Kevin Costner, yes. Charles Sheen, Tom Selleck. Sylvester Ooh, Stallone? Tom Selleck. Uh, Sylvester He'd have to shave his off his here, mustache, but, but maybe I can totally see Murray. it. Bill Murray. Man. He's another no, comedian, he's, he's man. Another, we do not need yeah. a comedian in the role of yeah, Batman. Cool. I think I think DC or Warner Brothers would really like get it together with their with their live action. You movies. know, I I felt like they had it better when they tried to get Ray Liotta, but oh, yeah. Ray Liotta said no. Yeah. So it's like, all right, that's fine. Yeah, that's yeah. that's fair. Mm -hmm. But come on. Yeah. Mr. Mom playing Batman? It doesn't work. This man. is gonna be terrible. Uh -uh. I, don't know, I think it's kinda cool. Well, you don't have opinions here. And you can't vote in this country. Yeah. Sorry. And you're not allowed to marry. In the 80s, I can't, I can't oh, vote. Okay. Oh, because I'm Asian. That's right, because I'm Asian. I'm the Asian one. We have to remind her all, all the time. Yeah, come on. Keep, keep it up. I'm just, just one more time. Michael Keaton. Yeah, guys. You're letting us down, Warner Brothers. No, yeah, guys. Get it right. Send in your letters, because this is unacceptable. Yeah, it they really could have gotten Pierce Brosnan. You know, the guy from Ooh, uh, Remington TV. Steel? Remington yeah. Steel. Mm -hmm. He'd mm -hmm. have been good. I yeah. I'm about that. All right, guys, well, that's the news. You've just been eaten by the news. I mean, so, we're, so we're doing this, right? Yes. Crush we, it on my head every like week. But that brings us to our first commercial break. Guys, cool. we'll be right back after these messages, but be sure to stick around for them because we have an exclusive interview with Stan Lee at the end of this commercial break. Yeah. So, so guys, for this. stay with us. The Comic Book Show right here on Public Access. How long is this long, right?
looking for me? To defeat the evil Decepticons, Nebulons team up with Autobots to become Power Master. Their engines the key that unlocks their transformer energy. We're under attack! Oh no, the Decepticons have Power Masters too! Transform Optimus Prime! When I started, I, I, I sprung from the depression years of this country where the most important thing uh, was just to have a steady job. You were a very uh, successful person if you worked steadily by my lights. So my prime concern was to please the publisher and the work I did so that I would have a steady job, and uh, I was successful at that. But after a while, I realized what I was doing was pretty meaningless, and I was doing the same thing over and over, year after year. And when we started Marvel Comics, I had been ready to quit. I figured enough. I'm a grown man now. I shouldn't stay in the comic field any longer. And my wife said, before you quit, just for fun, why don't you're going to leave anyway? Why don't you try doing some stories the way you think they should be done? And that's when we did the Fantastic Four and Spider-Man and came up with sort of a new type of more realistic, more relevant, if you will, superheroes. I want to be a member of the Fantastic Four. So now let's get down to business. How much does the job pay? I figure I'm worth your top salary. Afraid you made a mistake, Spider-Man. We're a non-profit organization. We pay no salaries or bonuses. Any profit we make goes into scientific research. You came to the wrong place, pal. This isn't General Motors. Hello, police. I'd like to report a crime. No, I'd rather not mention my name. I'm just a private citizen trying to do his duty. Well, it's not the way the human torch would have handled it, but at least I'll be able to get right home and see if Aunt May needs me now. Betty is hurt because she thinks I went to the club with Liz instead of her. On top of all that, the Green Goblin is free again and may strike at any time. Why don't things ever seem to turn out right for me? Is this the price I must always pay for being... Spider-Man. We tried to have the people talk like real people. We tried to define the characters and have them stay in character. We tried to get stories that, while imaginative, still had some realism, some believability, so that the readers could relate to and believe in the stories. inspiration that hit everything that we came out with seemed to catch the public's fancy and then it became fun then i didn't want to leave anymore guys welcome back to the comic book show i hope you enjoy that exclusive interview with stan lee stay tuned because we have even more exclusive interviews we got one with frank miller and jack kirby coming up so you, you'll never catch this anywhere else so stay tuned and uh now it's time for our segment that we call the danger room and that's where we take this week's comic books uh and we take the marvel and the dc ones and we put them head to head and you guys get to write in and vote to see who won who won the week Sounds like that song from Top Gun. Anyway. Do you have the write-ins from last week? Yeah. You want to go over yeah, now? yeah. Before, before we get into this week's round of the Danger Room, which I think the lower thirds should probably be switched, and they are awesome, uh, we're, uh, we also want to do a quick shout-out to Greg Barbie, who uh, sponsored us this week for this week's comic books. Indeed. He's so like a young 19-year-old hunk. Yeah. I took a look at his picture. Let's see. Let's, Let's uh, see what this guy yeah. looks like. Look Whoa! At that. I know. He's audacious he muscles, dreamboat? bro. That dude is like really. I don't really know what that guy's doing reading comic wow. books. Just saying. Yeah. Like if I was into guys, I'd really want to have sex with him. You know he beat up Lucas a few times. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Kinda I'm, I'm kind of scared. I mean, that's awful. I'm kind of well, scared. Well, guys, we got we got to give credit where credit is due, yeah. though. It's pretty rare. It's 
pretty rare that the jocks read comics, and it's pretty awesome that he was willing to send in this That's photo of sweet. himself. Yeah. I think I know what really happened. Broadcast. I think you know. what happened was he beat up some dweeboids, he took their comics, he didn't want to have anything to do with them, so he mailed them to us. It's fair enough. It could be, but he we still got to give credit where credit is due. Yeah. Congrats, Greg, yeah. on beating up all those dweebs, stealing their comics, and giving them to us. It goes to a good cause. It's good to see you have a little bit of a heart. And to all the rest of you guys out there, it can be okay to be a nerd. So take Greg Barbie's example and go out and show off your comic collection, let your nerd flag fly. He, it gets mm. better like, 20, like two decades from now, probably. No. But it will get I better. Doubt. You think it'll get better? No. You think comics will ever be cool, like mainstream? No. Like, this I guy had not. to pay me five bucks to come be here with you guys, and honestly, I'm really doubting my decision. You think there'll ever be a day when I mean, they're popular? Yeah, really so. wanted I hope they're not popular. Something. I mean, I hope they're still indie like Billy Idol. You know what? I'm going on record. Someday I'm going to be able to get a girl like you to date a guy like me without spending money on it. <laughs> <laughs> That's happen. stupid because it won't happen. Right. It's going to happen. No, uh, you're dumb. But so, I like well, it. You're a cool dude. You're my cool dead dude. body. Well, we got some uh, yes, fan yeah. letters. Amazing. Fan Amazing. letters, yep. those are mine. So people voted. You know, they, they all sent in their letters to vote for the Danger Room from last week. And actually, Greg, we, uh, we, we took your quote from your letter saying, uh, I think Power Girl number one won it for DC uh, this week. Uh, uh, just the cover alone made my eyes glue to the screen. Uh, sad to hear it's only a four-part miniseries. I can't get enough Power Girl. Well, uh, again, thank you, Greg. Thank you for writing in. And, but on the other side, Marissa Chastain from Columbus, Ohio, she wrote in saying, Todd McFarlane's artwork in Amazing Spider-Man number 301 is awesome. I totally agree with you, Marissa. Uh, mm-hmm. that, that guy's a temporary thing. Like he, like that. He's done. Yeah, he's done. What he well, said. well, she goes he's, on to say, saying uh, that that brought Marvel over to th- over the top this week. My vote goes for Marvel for the Danger Room. Thank you, Marissa. No. Thank you for uh, uh, voting. Thank you for writing in. Uh, we actually got a record amount of letters this past week. Four hundred and sixty-one letters, uh, where you guys wrote into us and voted for the wow. Danger Room. Uh, but uh, unfortunately for us Marvel guys, uh, DC won the week with 68% of the votes. Um, but uh, thank you all for writing in and casting your votes. And uh, and since DC won... It's because uh, we got these unpopular guys who are just like flash-in-the-pan artists. Like, uh, who's on X-Men? Like, the Sylvester guy, he stinks. Uh, Eric Larson stinks. Tom McFarlane stinks. Like, these guys... Like, let's go back to actually drawing comics properly. These guys are never going to be popular. Marvel's just hiring them because they can pay them for cheap. These guys should, like, go do their own thing because they don't belong on real comics. Like, they'll, they'll never be popular, these guys. Okay, you just, like, right. trash, this like, all the best. Marvel comics. I know. we got to get back to basics. About. You ain't Batman, bro. If we're going to win, we got to go back to the basics. All right. we got to go back to, to, to Walt Simonson, who's great. Bushima. Like, we got to go back to the basics. These guys, McFar- these young guys, nuh you got to earn your dues. Get out of comics or go start your own thing. My two cents. I'm sorry. That's when we're going to start beating to see again. Are, are, are you done? Mm-hmm. Are okay. they? So going back. Wow. That's my rant. Wow. So guys, since DC won last week, uh, Matt and Wes get to go yeah, first you know. for each round. Go first? Uh, Give me your watch. I might keep it. All right. <laughs> Bookend me. Saying Sandwich me. I can do that. It's a lot than I thought it would be. Do you like Batman? Dude, I with that like watch, she can fly her family over. He looks really good in the suit. Right? Yeah, the new, the new suit looks pretty good. It's really tight. That may be the most racist thing. That's really <laughs> it's okay, I get it every day. <laughs> in yeah, this country do. that doesn't accept my people. Um, what is it, 90 seconds? 90 seconds. On Matt's got this, bro, Suf. I got this. All right, ready? Go. All right, for round one, DC presents Captain Atom number 17. It's still only a dollar, guys, so be sure to pick this up because other DC books are starting to raise their price, so we'll talk about that later. But in this one, it's actually Swamp Thing and the Justice League, Captain Atom versus Red Tornado, who's an elemental. He's a bad guy right now. Uh, He was a good guy, but then he's bad again. Guys, it's got nudity in the book, so we got you covered on that because the art is actually really, really good. We've got the Justice League teaming up, trying to save Captain Atom, who is trapped in the elemental world by Swamp Thing, uh, who is also an elemental. I don't know if you guys knew that. But Swamp Thing and Red Tornado are trying to come to terms with the destruction that humankind is currently ravaging upon the environment. 
uh, Captain Adam has been caught in the middle of that, and he says, guys, if you both survived explosions to become elementals, how come I'm not an elemental? It's hinting at a storyline that might be coming down the line where maybe we'll realize something about Captain Adam that we have not known before. In the meantime, Jack Kirby's Black Racer is chasing him around, trying to catch him in this elemental in-between to kill him, which is obviously not good because Captain Adam has only gone 17 issues so far, and they're pretty good. Uh, we get a team up with Infinity Inc. at the very end, so there's a lot of all-stars in this book. Um, very, very cool book. Absolutely worth checking out, and it is the end of a storyline. It's not in the middle of anything else. So, guys, once again, worth it for the art, worth it for the story, and worth it at the price of just $1. Be sure to check out Captain Adam number 17 on shelves this week. Yeah! He stuck it! He pretty much stuck it! No. I, I, now, I think the, uh, the awesome. nudity is kind of pushing it. It's bogus, bro. It's like, desperate. Like, just awesome. wait until the next round. DC's awesome. bringing it. Bogus. Oh we're gonna bring it so hard. It's, oh, we're gonna God. feel it right. like well, in I got the something. back of our. I guess yeah. feel it hard. And I guess something. what? Dollar's way too expensive for a comic book. Just yeah. Yeah, it is really expensive. Unfortunately, your Marvel books running these days. How much is this one, Wes? Dollar. Start Wes the clock. Are you ready? Three dollars. Right, are we? Are, are you calibrated? And looking here. All right. Okay. And. Okay. And Ready. hit it. Okay, so guys, I got Fantastic Four number 316. Now, how it opens is there's a warning at it. It says, in this incredible issue, you'll find the one word you never thought you'd never see in a Marvel comic again. So throughout the whole time reading it, I'm like, is it this word? Is it this word? But okay, so it goes on. So Alicia, she comes to Antarctica, and she's reunited with uh, uh, the Human Torch, which is her husband, which is really weird there's this uh, a whole bunch of soap opera things going on here because you know alicia isn't supposed to be with the human torch i'm i'm probably gonna get into it guys uh she she belongs with the thing and there's this moment with the thing which is incredible you know how alicia's blind so she's not able to see uh but she feels uh the thing because she, he, you know he just recently went through this whole new transformation and so there's this whole moment with alicia and the thing and uh, i think everyone else is seeing it too like you know, Alicia is meant to be with the thing. And I don't know what they're doing here. But all of a sudden, when you turn the page, there's a bunch of Icemen that show up, and they, you know, Human Torch, you know, with the Human Torch versus Icemen, you know, no contest. But it, it looks like it's AIM that's actually behind it and everything. Uh, but guys, throughout the whole thing, I'm reading it, I'm like, what is this one word that they're like, it, it should never have shown up in uh, the uh, Marvel Comics again. But guys, at the very end, it's... Beyond our, oh my god, okay, where's my tissues, oh my god, okay, all right, um, but guys, pick up Fantastic Four, number three, oh, but yeah, pick it up on comic shelves now, because it's a must read. <laughs> How much is it? It's 75 cents. Oh, I know, I mean, you know, uh, you gotta, you gotta save money on these things, you know, guys, I mean. It's more expensive than gas. 75 cents. All right, All right so, guys. So what happens now? I want to hear your opinion. We're gonna we're gonna do our usual. We're gonna have Marvel's opinion of the DC book. We're gonna have DC's opinion of the Marvel book, and then we'll move into round two. So guys, what do you think about Captain Adam number seventeen? Bogus. Let me see. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the nudity nudity is just crossing a line. He's like really muscular. Uncalled for. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's awesome. a totally desperate move, knowing that a Swamp Thing movie is coming out, to put Swamp Thing in your comic. I know. That is so desperate. Like, I mean, like, that's like adding Spider-Man to the Avengers. That'll never happen. Yeah. Yeah. If they ever did that, I would uh, go ballistic. I wanted to see if like, like Swamp Thing had green eyes because he would look really good with green eyes. He's got red eyes. So now this is the book right here. Yeah, I mean, guys, it has. I didn't get into everything, I'm, and I won't, you know, give more information about it. But guys, this is a must read. And it is the number one family of comics. Yeah. The biggest book ever. This book is never going to get canceled. Look at this book. I mean, Fantastic Four, it's yep. a strong seller. It's the biggest book Marvel's ever going to have. Yep. Won't get canceled. If they're going to make any movies, they got to make these Why movies because every movie they make of this is going to be a great movie. You can't mess Why that would up. Why would you even think you that it would get canceled? You cannot mess this up. You can't right, mess well, this Wes, up. Wes, what do you think about Fantastic Four 316? Oh, what's up with that naked guy on the front there? What naked guy? That's the human torch. Yeah, he's on fire. He's hot. <laughs> he's flaming, yeah. He's yeah. No, temperature. He's hot. Oh. He's not. Yeah. I don't Got think. it. Now, yep. I, I gotta say, I am disappointed. Like, I don't know what's up with Human Torch trying to steal things, girl. That's messed up. Well, so well, I'm gonna married. say my opinion of Fantastic Four, but uh, yeah. I'd rather have naked chicks than cheaters. What's up with Swamp Thing no. trying to steal Captain Adam's book? No. <laughs> 
we, the Human Torch and Alicia, they're married. So, I mean, there's no cheating involved. I just... Does he it, belongs... She belongs with the Does, thing, it, does so. it burn when he pees? I, I don't know. All right, well, DC headed off round one. So, guys, keep I'm all this in mind. In my opinion. You have an opinion? Yes. Uh, we well, would love to hear your opinion. Girls, oh. The girl one and the Asian one has an opinion. Okay. I don't know what any of you guys are talking about. Oh. Okay, round two? Yeah. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. All right, well, DC so, headed off round control. one, so DC should, uh, should you want us no, to go yeah, first? You guys go yeah. first in all the rounds. Okay, we'll Except go first in all week. the rounds. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But guys, remember, it's not each round that you guys are voting on. It's You're voting the on the overall win. So if you love Marvel in round one and you didn't like DC in round two, don't worry, we'll bring it back next round. Yeah. It's the overall win this time. Hey, guys, real quick, are we still working on the 1-800 number so they can call in and vote? It'll just make things so much faster. It's it's a great idea. And like it would be almost immediate. It it's a great all, idea. We're trying to talk to our producers with ways that we can be more interactive and live. Uh, it hasn't happened yet a because a one, or a one nine hundred number, we can make a little bit of money, so we can yeah. buy a new surfboard. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the the problem right now is that uh, obviously we're a local show, so we only have so many viewers who are local, and we only have one phone number at the station. Um, and our producer got mad at us the last time we tried to do that. So we are working on solutions, guys. Hopefully, yeah. we'll be able to get. Live interactivity going soon. I remember that time, the pizza party incident. <laughs> My place. Yep. <laughs> that, that was a thing. Oh, they still like oh, the idea. Yeah. Don't worry, it's not going awesome. anywhere. Ever. <laughs> you like it, right? Yeah. What's going on? It's What's going on right now. You gotta pay me extra. Uh, he's not on my tab either. Okay. Ready. Let's do stuff, yeah? And go. Don't tell me how to do stuff, lady. Uh, so we got the question, number 18, and it's a team-up, guy-on-guy action. I gotta tell you, I really like it. I really like this stuff. Green Arrow and the question team-up, and it's like, they try to one-up each other with, with quippy banter. And I like, as you can tell, like, I'm really, like, quippy, and I'm really smart. So I like that kind of stuff. And I'll show you what's up, what else is nice. These pages are stuck together. I kind of really enjoyed the book, so just give me a... Give me a minute. Um, so the question like provokes him, and he's like, "I'm more clever than you." And then Ollie's like, "Yeah, but I look like Robin Hood, and I wear tights, and I like that too." Not, I don't like. It. He likes it. And then, uh, but so they work out their differences at the end. And he's like, Ollie's like, "How can I trust you?" And the question's like, "I disarmed a gun, man." And uh, uh, he's like, still not good enough. And the question's like, yeah, but I can quote Sun Tzu and the art of war. Yeah, I read. Shh, don't, don't tell me things. And then like, uh, he's like, not enough. And he's like, no. And then they blow up a car. Check it out. They blow up a car. And then, and then also they blow up a helicopter. Oh no, that's just them fighting. Hold on. They blow up a helicopter. And then they, they, they save a little kid at the end. That's my, that's what's going on. Question number 18. I'm done. Get away from the camera. Oh, all right. Immediately. Got it. All right. You're scaring away. Stuck that, right? So, yeah. Ow! Nice. Okay. Okay. Big guy. What should I do? Um, a good one. All right. Well, it's not that popular, but I'm going to go with the Avengers. You can't be man on man action. One day. The Avengers will be big. I Probably don't know. after I don't this know. big storyline, um, the Avengers. None of these guys War. are going to be big. Just saying. Okay, we've got to talk about Avengers. I don't know. Well, I think Wes can already tell you how big coming. these guys are. I can. I'm, I read Huge. comics the way. I agree it's with very that. Very muscular. Wes reads comics for the same reason I do that man on man action. I love dude action. Yeah. There's so much dude action, Lisa. Right. Hold on. Let me open my book. Explosions. You know, oh, this book's a dollar too, man. Marvel's trying to. Keep me from Come buying on, my, guys. my LPs. America. Okay. All right. Are you guys ready? And five more seconds. All right, guys. Uh, we've got yeah. ourselves Avengers number 293, and uh, this is leading into the Evolutionary War, which is going to be probably the best. Uh, this is probably the best event that's going to ever happen in comics, the Evolutionary War right there. It's going to be crazy when the High Evolutionary shows up. But in this comic, we've got uh, uh, 
Submariner's babe, and she's turning into a Leviathan, so they've got to, like, stop her because she just destroyed Atlantis. And so the, the, so he's like, uh, even though she's my wife, I will put Marina down, but I've got to recruit the help of the Avengers, probably the best Avengers team of all time. It's got Black Knight, Captain Marvel, She-Hulk, and Thor, all right? And um, so they're like, okay, we'll put her down. We'll make a special torpedo that'll inject this poison into her. And uh, it works, but she turns right back into a Leviathan and starts going crazy. And uh, how many seconds left? But then you've got this cameo of Kang the Conqueror. Like, this is the craziest thing that happens oh, in the wow. book. Kang, there's multiple Kangs. That's going to be huge. And I just think this book is awesome. And also, this game, Contra, is going to be huge. That's for the NES. they got great ads in there for this. And then at the end, you got Black Knight. And he's like, no, the sword touched blood. Uh. All right. Yeah, I think we Shaka. got it for this week. Yeah. You said they have yeah. great abs in there? Let me see that's what a comic book looks like, DC fan. <laughs> All right, so that finishes out round two. On DC side, we presented question number 18. On Marvel side, they presented Avengers number 293. Uh, Marvel, what do you guys Don't think about the question? Touch like, it. I, I was a bit confused how you were kind of fixated on the whole tights and things, but I, I, you turned me around. You gotta, you gotta get on it. You started talking about the- I'm clear as a um, bell on why this is great and why yeah. I'm attracted to the book. Yeah, when you started talking about the explosions and things, you, you kind of- Oh my God, it exploded attention. all over the snow. Oh. The hot helicopter. Oh, okay. But yeah. Um, but it's really good. It seems, seems interesting. It's really good. Uh, you could definitely, like there was tension between question and Ollie and his yeah. little goatee. Yeah. His little little yeah. twirly thing yeah. going on there. Yeah. All right, Wes, what do you think about the Avengers? Uh, I think it's a stupid team. I don't Are you like kidding them. me? It's, this is the best Avengers make team. It doesn't make any make, sense. If they, they make ever make an sense. Avengers movie, okay. which would be way too expensive, okay. it would probably cost think. $20 million. I don't think like, that... It would probably break the bank. No. They got to do uh, this team. They got to have Black Knight. They've got to have Namor. They've got to have uh, oh. uh, Captain Marvel, the black yeah. one. Yeah. Wait, Namor, Namor is that Aquaman ripoff, right? Do you need to stop that? He was actually uh, yeah. the first uh, mutant. Yeah, first mutant. He was the very yep. first one. Talk about uh, the X-Men uh, Wait, wait. I'll believe, Thor. That. I'll believe that when you guys can show me proof. you got to have oh. Thor. Like, Dolph Lundgren should actually play Thor. Actually, that would be pretty cool. Like, he should play Thor, not I the Punisher. Thor would be good. No, like, yeah. Dolph Lundgren should play no, If they're going to do Thor, um, they need to tie it in with the Incredible Hulk TV series. They already have Thor. From uh, the, he was the good. TV movie, yes. so they the just need to connect Hulk, it with that. The Incredible Hulk on an Avengers team would never work in a movie because yeah. no. he's a loner. Like he's, he's not right. like like that would actually make the movie really bad. Also, oh, there's not and a dude that, that just cements it forever. He will forever be alone. But yeah. guys, guys, let's take a Luther Igno back. That'd let's be cool. Talk about these comics. Though. Oh, uh, I gotta no. okay. I gotta give credit where credit is due. The High Evolutionary looks pretty badass. Yep. I think this one's gonna be a tough fight. In a council of kings, the conquerors. That's going to be tight. Yeah. I yeah. love it. Double shotguns for that one. Yeah. Shaka. Yeah. Guys. Nice. All right. Guys well, that moves us into Marvel. round right in. three. Unless, uh, Jennifer, you have something to contribute. Have what? Huh? Your hair is very pretty. Look, look, look. look. Need more the There's pink. There's pink right here. Check it out. All right. Hey. That takes us into round three. Yeah. DC presents first. Do it to it, brother. 90 seconds is not going to be enough to present how awesome this is. But I will try. It's probably cost 90 cents expensive book. So I don't make I'm money. actually going to talk and about this book. Go. 75 cents. Wonder Woman number 18. Take that, Mr. London. Now, even better than that, it has a free bonus book of 16 extra pages where they introduce the legend of the Amazons. But in the meantime, it's actually Wonder Woman. She's spending time in Greek. Check it out. They actually took the time to write in Greek. I really looked it up, and it's real, surprisingly. Uh, but the best part of this is actually the Legend of the Amazons bonus book number four. Um, we're going to try something new here. This has never been done on the comic book show, but I'm going to present the best panel uh, from the whole book right there. That's really all you need to know, right there. Right there, that's all you need. This, uh, this art is amazing. It's uh, George Perez and Dick Giordano. So, uh, right there, that's, uh, that's all you need to see. Wonder Woman is, uh, she's in it. 
she's definitely in it. It took, uh, it took quite a lot to get past that, but it actually gets better because at the very end, we are exposed to Cersei. It's the first time she shows up. Uh, and again, guys, the art is amazing. The storytelling is actually really good. Wonder Woman is pretty awesome in this. You see her get struck by lightning somewhere right around there. Um, with five seconds left, definitely, definitely be sure to check out Wonder Woman number 18. Oh God. Wonder Woman number 18. I'm going to get paid before you guys get canceled, right? That's We're not getting canceled anytime sure. soon. That is a desperate move. We're not getting canceled anytime I, I, soon. George Perez, Dick Giordano, like Wonder Woman. Like kids, like only kids read comics. I got to keep them wholesome. No I got the book to, to stomp on this. Okay. Wonder All Woman. Right. Okay. Go ahead, nerd. All right. Do your thing. Why'd you stick me with the Dwee Void? I don't know. She's the post, I think. You, you got you got him, but you got her on your side. So. Okay. All right. She doesn't even read comics. Yeah. This guy reads too many of them. So you They're got the an average out then. The best. It's not so bad. Welcome to our country. <laughs> wow. Thank you for being here. Wow. Uh, and this is why we don't let Wes talk to women. All right. So I'm good with women. I'm great. With, my mom taught me everything I know about and his, ladies. And his father fought in Korea. Well, my father's got. Do you know in Japan, the hand can be used as a knife? I don't speak Japanese. <laughs> Do you ever see Karate Kid, that documentary? All right, that was a good movie. Yeah, I loved it. It was a good documentary. Wax off. Ready to <gasps> a time traveler. Never mind, I'm going crazy. I've been hanging out with you dudes. You yeah, you were, you were definitely Oh, should we continue? All right, well, Marvel is going right. to present for round three. You better yeah. bring something good, because Wonder Woman's boobs. All over right. Wonder Woman. All over boobs. Yeah. That's, that's, LeBron that's, a, should play that's a bunch of sending. But guys, okay. Go. Kelly LeBron. Right. So go. guys, I got Spectacular go. Spider-Man number 140, and it does cost a dollar, so you guys are going to have to save up for this one. But, um... Uh, it starts out with uh, Robbie Robertson. He's been uh, shot from the previous issue, and he's recovering. And uh, we know that it's Tombstone. And uh, uh, Spider-Man, well, Peter finds out later, you know, that it is Tombstone. So as Spider-Man, he does some investigating of his own. And while he's questioning these thugs, uh, he's about to get fired on by this guy. But then, uh, and it does the little katow sound effect. But um, it's not, it, it wasn't the the goon that shot it was some other guy that shot the goon so and then there's this shadowy figure so we're like who is a shadowy figure and, and spider-man's trying to figure it out uh he, he goes to uh he goes to the arranger and he's like tell me where tombstone is and everything like that uh and there's this really funny incident where uh a bunch of henchmen come in and uh chase spider-man out the window and uh, one of the goons was like oh my god he just committed suicide and the guy's like oh i guess you're new in town and everything like that but um, so then the, the shadowy guy shows up again and uh, he's like, oh, meet me at the Statue of Liberty. And so they meet and we found out the shadowy guy is the Punisher. And I, I think that tops whatever DC talked about because um, what he talked about was a bunch of sin and it shouldn't be in comic books. So guys, pick up Spectacular Spider-Man number 140. You have 10 seconds. Oh, I, I got more time. We uh, well, um, yeah, I guess just pick it up on the comic book shelves now. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I'm going to head this one off. Uh, as far as Marvel books go, what was it that you were saying like two rounds ago, Jonathan London, about having a Swamp Thing appearing in a Captain Adam book being a cheap shot? Uh, with the announcement of the Punisher book, all of a sudden appearing in Spider-Man, don't you think that's a cheap shot? Let's count also, the panels. Let's just count the panels. To, uh, just do this really quickly. He's in, he's we've in, got he's in, boobs, and we've got bogus. He's in, he's boobs? In two, look, two panels. Bogus. This isn't boobs. taking over the book. This is two... Two Bogus. panels, not taking over the book. Boobs. This is still very much a Spider-Man comic. Bogus. And uh, boobs. And and kids read this stuff. Kids yeah. read this, this kid reads like this. they should. It'll make you a man. Kids read this book. Uh, not a bunch of grown. The book, comics are not for a bunch of like thirty-something grown men. Nope. Okay, it's for kids, like teenagers and younger. Like us. And so you shouldn't yep. have nudity in it. Yeah. I mean, could you imagine what the industry would be if it was just read by a bunch of forty and thirty-year-olds? Like right. it, it, like nothing it would, would get done ever. Nothing would happen. Yeah. Right? In but life. no, it's for kids. So nudity does not... Uh, you, you think a bunch of kids play Dungeons and Dragons? Nope. Yeah, they do. Oh, yeah, adults, they do. <laughs> adults who play Dungeons and Dragons are called uh, losers. And uh, so, yes, uh, the Punisher's in two of these panels. Not exactly taking over the book. I deny your argument, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Guys, you guys got it right in. As always, it's up to you guys. You've heard our thoughts. But keep it in mind as we move into round four. Yeah. Wes, you got something for the oh, audience? Oh, I got something. getting heated. 
heated. You guys want to go to Burger King after this? I really want more of yeah, those, those cups. Cup holders. I don't have the I'm money. Kind of, it's I'm too, too expensive. I've, I've been saying those quarters, clothes. man. I'd rather spend them on the cups than. I don't the, have the bottle caps for it. I know. Anyone? I'll ride my skateboard over there. Ready. I can't hmm? afford wheels. Oh, yeah. and. Yeah, I'm ready. Go. Cool. So, like, uh, Action Comics Weekly, number 610, and it's Dead Man. This guy's awesome, and he looks really good in, in, the, in that, right there. And then, so this whole book basically starts out with Green Lantern uh, fighting uh, red-headed Zorro, and things get bloody really quick bro it's like it's crazy and then like other stuff happens like uh oh oh stranger danger shows up or the phantom stranger i get them confused lies well, i do a lot of drugs uh then oh then uh uh this uh this computer monster this is crazy this computer monster shows up right and he's all like uh verbally uh, uh abuses this computer geek He's like, yes, Kenny Bush Miller, feed me. Input, input. And he's like, no. And he said, I said input. Why do you stop the flow of data? <laughs> That's how I think he sounds. And then like this, and then he eats his head. Right there. Yeah, it's good. And then, uh, oh, and then Dead Man shows up as a middle-aged woman in a scarf to save the day. Yeah. At 10 more seconds. I don't know if you want to it's do anything. Fine. DC doesn't Good. need 10 more seconds. DC's got yeah, this. We were doing everything we can to get that extra buck. It's for a win. Uh, thank, God. thank you very much, Jennifer Zay. <laughs> uh, oh. did, did you just set God. my name yeah. to our national yeah. anthem? Are you yeah. No, 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 it's all you. It's all you on this nice one. Nice job. Nice yep. job. Nice job. Um, that was a win. DC won that. We no, won that. Oh, oh, I got something to say about Did that. Did you see Thanks. the middle-aged woman, bro? Do not besmirch our national anthem like that. I'm very the sorry, anthem, Jennifer Zang. Speaking of the national anthem, we have got to talk about the man who wears the flag himself. Put the time on the clock. Are you ready? And go. We're talking about Captain America, number 343. If you want... If you want superheroes, this one's got everything. Venom's a now a good person. Uh, he's fighting with this person who's not Falcon, but later on Falcon is in the book helping out U.S. agent, and they're chasing people around. They team up with Nomad and D-Man, and D-Man's like running around in his wannabe Wolverine suit, and that's pretty awesome. They team up with Venom to try and catch some people. They're called the Regulators. Keep in mind, if you've been reading Marvel Comics, mutants have to register, which is why the X-Men think that they died in, they're hiding out in Australia, because they don't want to register. They thought they died in, in Dallas. They faked their death. But that's going through, I mean, this has repercussions throughout the entire Marvel Universe. So you got to really read this because it's going to tie into everything. It's going to tie into the, to the, to the uh, uh, upcoming um, uh, uh, crossover. It's going to have everything in it. Like, I'm telling you, even though crossovers are not that big in comics right now, there may come a day when something like Evolutionary War kicks up the jams and all of a sudden there's crossovers everywhere. And that'll be the greatest day ever. I hope there's crossovers all the time year round but i gotta tell you i love comics i love marvel and that's why i gotta tell you i wear marvel all the time let's dance ready marvel I, here we go the marvel shimmy that's right i wear marvel all the time all right i wear marvel to the beach when i'm hanging tan on my surfboard i wear marvel undies all the time there we go i'm all about the marvel well whoa hey what whoa whoa he's a big marvel fan there we go yeah vote marvel all right, boom. Is this about comic books still? <laughs> I'm beginning to wonder that myself. Okay, it's a good presentation. So John. Do you, you want to be come enthusiastic over later? Maybe just to like read comics. I love comics. What can I say? Marvel only, peace. Yeah. Well. All right. That well, that was that round was four. Yeah. Uh, DC has presented the question number question. eighteen. Marvel has presented... No, Action Comics. Oh, that's right. Action Comics number 610. They can't, they can't even keep track of their comic ties. Keep Captain that. America yeah. 343. I, I, think, I think this guy That's wins. the one you have to write in. Yeah. But I'm glad you had, you know, Dead Man as a middle-aged woman because i got to tell you, Marvel's in my blood, all right? That when I'm definitely hanging 10 on that surfboard, wasn't a middle-aged woman. I'm wearing some Marvel when the ladies are like, wow, look what he's packing. I'm packing Marvel. All right, well, Wes, what do you think about Marvel's argument? Uh... Great underwear. Um, and the book? There was a book? All right. <laughs> Marvel, what do you think about DC's argument? Um, 
I actually forget what you guys said. So exactly. M middle aged uh, woman. Oh, oh yeah. And then some guys the computer got monster. Bit off. Computer monster. He's all like, Hurr. oh yeah. It, 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 yeah, it's very, very, well, my data. very tech savvy. Data, I think it's, data. it's looking to the future in, yeah. in comic books. Scary. So, uh, but I, I got to go with Captain America on this one. If you want to yeah. hang ten with some bodacious babes and on your surfboard, you got to wear some Marvel undies. I'm telling you, <coughs> it's done <coughs> wonders for me. You go Commando. All right, I don't go Commando. It's a movie, bro. Not a way of life. Marvel's a way of life. Yeah. Okay. Subjective. Yeah. All right. Well, that moves us into round five. We yeah. got Maddie. Hey yeah, guys, this is the final round. Bring it home, I hope bro. You guys have kept track of everything this one's that's for been the whole said. If you have, enchilada. you're voting for the whole Marvel. Enchilada. Enchilada. Sorry. Get this DC refuge out of here. Oh, that's the dude on dude stuff. Don't mess it up. Uh, yeah. Uh, All right. Goatee. Oh my god, it's so delicious. Looks like he has two books in his hands. <laughs> this dude's cheating. He's got two books. I, I think you're. I think you're pushing it. You don't even know cheat. what's up. All we right, had this plan for years. And no, just let him do it. I'll just go. Because we're only allowed to talk about one piece of evidence, I'm not going to talk about Flash Gordon with Dan Jurgens. Uh, it's amazing, but I'm not allowed to talk about it. So sorry, guys. Instead, we're going to talk about Star Trek DC 52. It uh, sounds, sounds kind of good, DC-52, I don't know. Um, but we've got Star Trek. In this one, actually, one of the ensigns is using his telepathic powers to create Hell in a Handbasket, the name of the story. Um, actually, they got permission from uh, Bantam Books to use Dante's The Divine Comedy, and they actually quote it, too. It's a really good adaptation of The Divine Comedy. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. The Inferno is depicted very well throughout the book. They actually go through all nine circles of hell. Uh, Spock talks to Plato in it, which is actually awesome, and Socrates, because he's one of the philosophers. Um, Spock ends up having a, a hard time trying to get over Sulu's bestiality. Not kidding, that's a real thing in this book as well. Uh, Bones has a really difficult time trying to deal with all of the people who are suffering, which is tragic to him. Um, they end up making it down to the ninth circle and they see the ensign and they are able to save him. But wait, holy crap, one of the guys who was in hell actually ends up stabbing Captain Kirk in the chest. He's dead. He's dead. You're dead, Jim. Um, really good book! Amazingly, really good for a dollar. Definitely worth picking up. Star Trek number 52. Um, great to see them in the uniforms from the movies rather than from the original series. Uh, really good read. And if you've never read The Inferno, you're missing out because a lot of the references are of the higher level. There's also boobs. That's also a thing that's in this because DC knows how to do it right. Um, but check it out. Star Trek number 52. You okay? I'm fine. I'm not talking to you. You've besmirched our national anthem. I'm very sorry, Jennifer. All right, I'm, I'm just going to jump right into it, guys, because I, I think we're running low on time. What time oh. is it? Jennifer has my watch. It's time to so roll! Tell, tell me when to go, Jennifer. It's shut up o'clock. And go. Guys, so I got the, the Mighty Thor number 393. And as you can tell from the, the cover, we got two battles going on. We got uh, Quicksand versus Thor and... Uh, Daredevil versus Hogan from the uh, uh, Warriors 3. So in the, when it opens up, uh, there's this battle with Quicksand and Thor, and uh, Thor gets a hold of his uh, hammer, Mjolnir, and uh, uh, Quicksand has this uh, 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 thought bubble saying, oh, he, he's not pulling any punches now. Uh, was he doing it before because I'm a woman? I, I, I don't know why he, he, she would think that. Uh, uh, but then uh, we jump to the battle with Hogan and uh, Daredevil, which is happening a few blocks away. And uh, uh, yeah, it, it, what happens is uh, Hogan has a head injury when he lands on Earth. And so instead of seeing Daredevil like this, he sees Daredevil like this, so like a, a huge demon. So uh, that's why Hog Hogan is uh, attacking Daredevil. So uh, it goes on, and uh, Quicksand has uh, taken over this power plant, and she uh, uh, has it almost detonate. But luckily, Thor uses Mjolnir to teleport the, uh, the uh, power plant to another uh, world that's uninhabited, and it blows up. Boom! You see that? Boom! And look, it, I, I guess if you look closely, it does look like some sort of boobs and nipples in the foam. Um, so there's that. And uh, we, we go back to uh, the Daredevil and Hogan uh, battle where uh, Hogan... Oh, okay. But you guys definitely have to pick this up. You guys Was definitely have to pick this up. Half? The Mighty Thor, number 393. God. Ugh.
All right. Yeah. I'm going to say all of the reference to Hogan, and it's not Hulk Hogan, so I'm voting no on Marvel. Samesies. I, I feel no. like the one thing that it it's did not. have really just reminded me of the thing that it didn't have. So. It's got boobs. I wasn't saying Hogan. I was but saying Hogan. Boob. But it's got boobs. It, it's nowhere near related to Hulk Hogan. That's, and that's all, the problem, if, if that's bro. That's all DC likes. Yeah. It's got plenty. That's what he's getting at. I, I so am. in this round, I, I think it's pretty clear. But what do you guys think? Marvel, what do you think of DC's book, Star Trek? I don't remember. Number 52. I don't remember it. And there's, and, and there's only one Star Trek now. It's this new series. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. There's a next generation. That's what it's all about. Agree. That's what it's all about. All right, that old stuff, that's your dad's Star Trek. All right, this is the 80s. Everything's top of the line, okay? Yep. Nope. All right. Well, yes. guys, we have presented Maybe. our books for the week. We now turn it over to you to get yeah. your votes in. You have to mail in a self-addressed stamped envelope along with a 3 by 5 card saying who you want to vote for this week, Marvel or DC. Uh, Lucas, do you have the address, or am I doing this? Uh we're actually going to present it at the end of the show. Okay. So, guys, good. stay tuned. Uh, we'll, give, we'll give you the address then. Uh, uh, I just want to take this moment to remind all our viewers to bag and board your comic books to keep them nice and safe. What kind of savages are you? Bag and, and board, uh, ladies. Uh, so, uh, no glove, I, I think no it's, love. it's time for a commercial break. Uh, we guys, we promised you an interview with Frank Miller, so stay tuned. And when we come back, we will have that uh, exclusive interview with uh, Frank Miller. So he should do a RoboCop. That would be really good. He should write a RoboCop movie. I agree. I, okay. I, how could that go wrong? All I right. Like that. Well, well, we'll be right back right after this. How much? The turtles are assaulting the Tactodrome. Insider, the Foot Clan, Prep and Storage Chamber, Krang's Laboratory, and Shredder's Master Control Room. Huh? Turtles? Oh, they've been spotted. Now they'll have to watch out for the ice spy radar. That hit news tip. The spike back door. Turtle soup time. Oh, no. An ooze scanner. A brain scrambler. And mutant manacles. Can Leonardo rescue them? Sure hope so. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. From Playmate. It's a signal, it's a sign you gotta get through When your stomach wants to eat You can do it Your There are a very few, maybe only two or three comic book characters that have been created that have stood, you know, five decades of time and have, and have been adapted two different times. With Batman, you've got a character you can describe in just a few seconds. Parents were murdered by criminals. He's been he's warring on crime for the rest of his life. His motive is there. He uh, he looks great, and he is so simple in his design and in his concept that he's open to an, uh, an incredible number of interpretations. He was created in 1938, I believe, and the character that was created then was just ruthless in his methods terrifying to criminals. Over the years, that got softened and softened because people started thinking that comics had to be just for kids. And once they decided they were made for kids, all of a sudden, Batman had to be made much nicer. And eventually, just no kid would relate to him anymore. What I've been trying to do recently um, is to take the stuff of the old comics and do it in a way that it'll that that that's worth reading for me. So good. The fastest man alive. What is it insisting that every man has? Maybe it's the White House, isn't it, dear? Whatever stories I write have to do with my reactions to what's going on around me. 
but the world that I live in right now with 1980s America, which is a very frightening, silly um, place. And it's often silly and frightening at the same time, and I hope Dark Knight is often silly and frightening at the same time. And we're back from whatever that was. Yeah, actually, uh, thanks for watching. That was our exclusive interview with Frank Miller. He did yeah. the Dark Knight Returns. Frickin' awesome. Yeah. Stay tuned for more. You're gonna hear from Jack Kirby. Yeah. Coming up later after yeah. the Secret Wars. Which we're gonna do right now. It's where you guys write in and give us your favorite fictitious characters that you want to see pinned in a battle to the death. And we discuss it and it's gonna be awesome. So we have a bunch of suggestions that people have mailed in. So we got, we got, we got. No, no, you get the, you get the names on the back. Oh, and got you got the suggestions on the front. Got it. Oh, this is Jackie Opez from Baker, California. Oh, she's she's written in before. I don't think she's yeah. a superhero. Yeah. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles versus the GI Joes. Cool. Gotta that's go pretty, with the Ninja Turtles. That's pretty cool. Ninja Wait. Turtles are faster, quicker. Only Snake Eyes. We'll give them well, any kind let's of trouble. Let's give a little background on the characters for the new viewers and for people who are... Where well, you been, under a rock? I know, A right? pet rock? <laughs> episodes are airing right now on CBS. Well, G.I. Joes are awesome. My vote's going with G.I. Joes. The, the G.I. Joes outnumber the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles by a mile. The G.I. Joes have ninjas in their group. They've got several of them, including the aforementioned Snake Eyes. Uh, on top of that, you have all kinds of other heroes that come equipped with rocket launchers and all kinds of guns. Um, they've got resources, they've got bases, they've got governmental backing. Uh, I'm going to go with G.I. Joe's. Those are your parents' toys. All right. <laughs> so, so the turtles, they were originally uh, actual turtles. They mutated from this ooze, and they were trained by Splinter to be ninjas. Uh, and I, if you guys have seen the cartoon, the, it, it's amazing. It's actually a comic book, too. Some of you guys don't know this, but it's actually a comic book. We know and, it. And there's, there's also this, uh, <laughs> this theory going around that uh, the ooze is actually the same ooze that turned uh, Matt Murdock blind. Only a theory. So, yeah, just, just a theory. But uh, I, I, I kind of agree with you, Matt. I, I think I would go with, uh, with G.I. Joe just because... I, I feel like they have more combat training, really good the um, they, and they're not teenagers, so there, there's that aspect of that. G.I. Joe's for kids, it's all about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah. It's gritty and real. Wes, what do you think? Well, he said gritty and real, but G.I. Joe's like, they're in the army, and they, they, they fight for a country. You love a man in uniform. And I love a man. You gotta respect and, that. And he's got a bandana on, like he's so sweaty. Like, I just wanna, I just wanna bathe you. But they don't have attitude. Meow. Gotta stick with the turtles right here. Ba yep. I mean, like, bathe you with ad adoration. Jennifer, what do you think? Yeah. Well, I do have a little brother. He does watch Ninja Turtles. Is he here in this country? Wow. They have Ninja Turtles in Japan. Oh, okay. They my, eat them. But he is here in this country. That's cool. Um, and, uh, His name Pi? He's pretty rad. They eat Pi. I love pie. So you're you're voting for the Ninja Turtles? Yes, because that's the one I know. What's Got this other one? Uh, G.I. Joe. G.I. Joseph? Yeah, you're still recovering from what they did to your country. Oh, I'm, that's true. Burn. I'm against whatever that is. Okay. Fascism. Well, Meow. doesn't matter. We still have three votes G.I. Joe, two votes Ninja Turtles. Thank you, Jackie Opez from Baker, California. Really appreciate it. And G.I. Joe out. wins. Come on, we got uh, a little something from Jason Hall. For now. From uh, 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 Los Angeles, California. Oh. Uh, Adam West versus Linda Carter. Oh. Bird Ooh. Lord. Wait. Uh, no. Just the actors or not, and not their characters? Apparently. Um, okay. Um, well. I think Linda Carter could kick the shit out of Adam West. Hey, no, no hey, cursing. Hey, hey, hey. But the TV. booty. Our the booty juice out of. I don't know. going to be so mad at us. It's okay. Um, they can bleep us out, right? Uh, it's it's live. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, and it's late night. There's, there's nobody in the control booth other than uh, Anthony. Uh, and we appreciate him helping yeah. out. Yeah. Thank you, person. Anthony, order so, the pizzas. He's taking so time from his uh, newspaper route. Well, we, we got Adam West versus Linda Carter. 
I mean, I think Linda Carter's taller than Adam West. Yeah. Uh, Did you see the guns on Linda her? Carter's show didn't run as long as Adam West's show, <laughs> but. I, I still think Linda Carter would. Uh, I think Adam West is too much of a gentleman. I think Linda Carter would beat the beat the bejesus out of Adam West. And her arms are very masculine. Right. Huh. I'm going Linda Carter. Yeah. Same. I also vote Linda Carter. Do you know who she is? The girl one. Yep. Okay. I gotta go Adam West, cause he's a man's man. Yeah. I, I mean, you're you're asking whether uh, a woman can beat a man, and I just don't find that plausible. This so. is the I'm pretty 80s. sure a lot of women be, never this mind. I'm not going to be mean to him. He's, he's suffered enough. This is the 80s. Okay. You well, think so that means, that being uh, said, he's I, a man I, I just, yeah, in I mean, a man's world. So you voted what? The girl one. You voted Adam West. You voted Adam. Linda Liss says three versus two. Linda wins. Thank you, Jason Hall Gotta from Los Angeles, California. Number. If there's only a way for them to immediately vote, like yeah, a 1-900 number. Right. Yeah, uh, we've been talking about it. So, so oh, hey. Greg Barbie. Hey. This yeah. guy. Thanks, Greg. Dan Point. CA, bro. He writes Howard the Duck versus the Toxic Avenger. As far as movies go, they both are pretty good. Amazing cinema films. Wait, wait what is it again? Toxic as far Avenger as versus go? Howard the Duck. Hmm. Okay. I gotta go with the um, Toxic right. Avenger. I mean, yeah. that's a box office, like, that's a big box office yeah, movie. I mean, are they just talking the, the movies, or are they talking... That's like, all the information okay. I have. I right. just got what's on the card. Greg, I'll right. see you at the keg this that. weekend. Uh, well, let's let's do a little bit of background on this one, because yeah. this one seems like one that everybody's yeah. got a firm opinion on. So give me the powers of Howard the Duck. He, he I hated that movie. <laughs> I'm not the right guy to, to talk about. Or Toxic about. Avenger. He's awesome. I get you on Toxic he's got Avenger. attitude. Yeah, he, That's it. Yeah, he awesome. doesn't have any powers. He's got attitude. Yeah, he doesn't have he any plays powers. He electric well. guitar. He's so Toxic sassy. Avenger does not play an electric guitar. No. Therefore, he uh, loses. But he yeah. plays air guitar on no. his mop, which he's he pretends to have. What? His mop. He's a janitor. He's a janitor. He was exposed movie? to toxic nah, chemicals. The movie was he came back and cleaned up the streets. He actually nice. got stuff done. Howard. The, the, he was a real legitimate the, superhero the, 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 who did something. He's got a something. better theme song. Howard the Duck. Better theme song. That's probably true. But I still, I, Toxic Avenger uh, started off life as a janitor, uh, was exposed to some toxic chemicals, came back uh, a little bit less good looking, certainly, but uh, far more effective as a vigilante and a crime fighter. He cleaned up the streets of his town, uh, legitimately cleaned them, and worked hard to prevent crime. My vote's going for Toxic Avenger. I, I, I have to agree with you there. Yeah, Toxic Avenger all the way. Because Howard the Duck, he doesn't have any powers. I mean, he can't. He's got the power of being awesome. I mean, I was going to say that. That's what he says. I was going to do the thing. That, that way he it's says. Like but, All right, so, we, so far it's tied up. Jennifer, your vote is going to make or break the difference. For once your vote actually matters, you can you're going here. with uh, Howard the Duck or the Toxic Avenger. Which one is less gross? Neither. Howard the Duck. In this case, neither. Kinda. The less gross one. The duck one. Yeah, I did, man! Yep. Yeah. Pecking duck. Take that. Thank you, Greg Barbie. Oh, I like your baby oh, dolls to play sauce, with huh? as a young child. Yeah, plum sauce. We'll do one more? How many more? No, no, All we got time. We got time. Okay. We still got uh, 40 minutes of the show, so I think, I think as long as the viewers are willing to send in their submissions, we should just keep doing them. I'm going to 2 a.m. Ghostbusters versus the Transformers from Benjamin Affleck from Small W.A. Washington. Uh, Washington. That's nobody Washington. comes out of that place. Yeah. I hope that kid's got Benjamin. big dreams. Benjamin. What a cute Benjamin name. Affleck. All right, so we got Ghostbusters versus Transformers. That's correct. Let's go. All right, so mm. so Transformers, they're robots. Yeah. They got missiles. They got a whole bunch of weapons, and they, they can turn, turn into, into cars. Cars, yes. And uh, uh, Ghostbusters. They yeah. bust ghosts. So make bust and feel good. Bustin' makes you feel good. It does. I, I, Transforming don't make you feel good. Bustin' makes you feel good. But you know what? If the Transformers went into our collective zip code, there would be, like, indeed, something weird going on in our neighborhood. So I think that's... Uh, like, the Transformers the did stop Unicron. Okay. They did. But it cost them Optimus. Oh. But... Uh, that thing survived. <laughs> I, I honestly think this is an unfair uh, fight. For the Ghostbusters, I, I 
don't think they have a chance. They, as long as Bill stopped, Murray's so. there, he they wins. Stopped the, they stopped the, they crossed the streams, Murray. they stopped the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man, and yeah. they stopped Zul from entering. Right. Have right. you ever crossed the streams? They, they also are legitimate scientists, and they have quite a lot of experience That's in right. dealing with uh, paranormal. It's true. So right. it's true. Machines come to yeah. life. I mean, they made the toaster dance. So. I mean, I feel yeah. like real That's talk, true. real talk, you guys, I feel like since uh, Transformers, yeah, they're robots, but they're technically aliens. Right? And I think aliens, I think, yeah, I think aliens are in the realm of the Ghostbusters expert toss. If they're dead, they have ghosts. When the aliens die, they have ghosts. Don't the the Transformers have some vow against hurting humans? Isn't that like Uh, they're only out to fight? I mean, but if it's to the death, if it's to the death, though, I mean, I'm I'm sure they, they bend the rules somehow. All right, well, I think it's time to, to get votes in on yeah. this one, guys. It's Transformers yeah. versus Ghostbusters. Definitely, definitely Transformers. No, no doubt about it. I'm going to go Transformers because they're big. Bill Murray. All right, you're good. Yeah, you're good. I like the Ghostbusters too much. I think the Ghostbusters are going to last longer as a cartoon. I'm going with Ghostbusters. Same. Hold on. Hold Jennifer? Oh, she's here. I wasn't listening. Okay, so Ty. You All right, that one's a tie. Good, 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 tie. good vote. Think, you okay. think we'll make good more vote. movies? Thanks for uh, contributing. I think they're going to make like a bunch of Ghostbusters sequels and like nothing is ever going to happen with the Transformers. Too expensive. Like those stupid. movies would end up costing too much. The like, director of that would have to be like a huge cocaine addict. <laughs> it wouldn't make any sense. Those movies would cost probably like $25 million. That's too, uh, the that's most. That's, too much. that's the like an unheard of. The way they would be able of. to do it would be to actually build robots that turn into yep. cars. Yep. Yep. She is You'd have to attention. develop okay. technology. Really smart. That's really smart. She is, she is is, I tuned in for that little that bit. Really, uh, it's the only way you'd be able to do it. Are, you, are, are your schools, people working on that? The schools over uh, there are I'm not so at good. liberty to say. I don't know. After Wes made that argument spy. about the machine that ate that guy, I'm I'm scared of Transformers. Did so I'm you going guys see um, the Emilio Estevez movie, Maximum Overdrive? Yeah. Like, they got those cars to act, and that was pretty good. That was a good movie. That's fair. They could probably do a Transformers movie. I'm going to say Ghostbusters. I'm going to say Ghostbusters. I'm saying that if we were to make robots that uh, turned into cars, we would not use them for movies. We would use them to exact our revenge. Okay. There's a lot of hate in you. All right, well, we're going with Ty on this one. We're going to get revenge on you. Thank you so much, uh, Benjamin. Benjamin. Yes. What's up? Ben. Benny. Thank you. Okay, here we go. Here's a big one. Oh. So oh, this, this is from Lucas Hitchcock from oh. San Diego, California. X Men versus the Justice League. I, I thought I recognized that name. He's Ooh. one of the members of my uh, unofficial X Men. Who's on the ju- oh. Who's on that Justice League though? And who's on oh, the X Men? Who's point. on the X Men? All right. Like, well, so, yeah, we the give us some background on the X Men. Yeah. So X Men, as you all know, I remind you every week. Uh, so they're they're humans, but they were born with the X gene that gives them uh, extra powers. You know, they each have like. Uh, unique powers like telepathy, uh, flight, stuff like that. But the current X-Men right now, the roster, they, they have a huge team. We got Colossus, who can uh, turn into organic steel. Uh, we got Rogue, who uh, can uh, touch pow- uh, touch other people and get their powers and their uh, thoughts and everything. Reach out and touch but uh, she right now also has the abilities as Miss Marvel used to have. So she has, you know, super flight, strength, you know, stuff like that. Uh, we got Psylocke, their uh, telep- uh, telepath for the team. Mm. Got Dazzler, who can turn sound into psionic blo- blasts. Love uh, uh, Wolverine, uh, who, you know, he heals, first of all. He's so a he, hairy guy, right? Yeah, he, he can't be killed. Uh, he it's has adamantium bad. skeleton with the claws, can cut through anything. And he also has animal do think, senses. Do you think the, the metal is in his, in his thing? Different bone. Different, yeah. That's a different bone. Yeah. Yeah, um, it's, on, it's on his I bone. I all his bones were uh, coated. They, al- they also have Longshot, who is not a mutant. He's from another dimension, uh, but he has powers of luck, so everything just, like, turns in his favor. It's uh, and, and, and who else? Oh, Storm. She can control the weather. Uh, Women are moody. So yeah. who's on the Justice League? Yeah. All right, guys. Well, I, I'm, not, I'm not that impressed with what no. you got going on with the x because for the Justice League, we've what got... We got? Mr. Miracle, oh, can miraculous! Escape anything. We've got Booster Gold. He boosts who's from the future with a robot and on he's his got shoulder. Force fields. Oh. We got Blue Beetle. He's blue. He's an inventor. 
Um, we have the Ice Maiden and the Green Flame. She who are, is they're ice. new, but they're sisters. They got some powers that are pretty cool. We've got Captain Adam. Oh! He's got nuclear powers oh. that are pretty cool. We've got Superman, but he's in space right now, so I don't think he's really on the team he's got, right he's now. Got so I don't think stuff. he counts. He's got some um, stuff right now. He's doing some things. And we've got Martian Manhunter, who's mm. really strong, and he's a he's a low-level telepath. He can't breathe in space. He can't phase through anything. He uh, is not as strong as Superman, um, and he's green, so that's cool. Yeah, uh, I like. Kermit. I think I think, uh, but that's that's the current that's Ooh, the Justice League that's roster good. right now. That's good. Wow. So we got we got the Justice League versus the X Men. I think hands down, X Men wins. Mm. Yeah, Sorry. yeah. Yeah, definitely. I they think, win it going away. I think with Longshot on the team, you know, everything is going to go into his favor. Uh, and with him being on the X-Men side, I think they got it. Rogue being very overpowered right now. And uh, Wolverine, you just can't kill him. Yeah. So, I mean, you may be able to take out a few of the X-Men, but I no. the X-Men will... No, I don't even think working together, I don't think the Justice League should take anybody out. Kind of right screwed. I mean, Mr. Screwed. Miracle, he would run away, and he'd be successful at that. <laughs> be okay. Everybody else would lose. Maybe. They would die. I think, uh, I think the X-Men win this one. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I guess. Totally agree. Shock Jennifer, up. you got a smirk on your face? You, you're agreeing with us? or What? What? The so X-Men. All right. Yeah. I think what X-Men wins that one. Yeah. Thank you, whoever the hell you were uh, yep. for that. Look so it. Star Trek versus Star Wars, sent in by... Matt Ackerman from Denver, Colorado. He's oh. one of my Star Trek, uh, Mile High Star Trek fan oh. club. Ackerman, I, so. you know, I wonder if he's related to me. We never talk about that old series, uh, Galaxy Quest. I miss that show. Oh, but that was from like the 40s, man. Nobody remembers that. Yeah, so. that Tim Allen guy. Uh, we got Star it. Trek versus Star Wars. What do you guys think? Um, well, if we're going the franchise route, definitely, I mean, Star Wars, I mean... Uh, they have movies. And yeah. Star Trek has movies, Star Trek too. Has movies I, I, but I have not the checked them out. Well, and I don't plan to. In fact, to. Star Trek has more movies um, than Star Wars. Better. Better. Well, that's good so for them. No way. The even movies. The movies are all bad. The odd movies are all good. I'm going to go with Star Wars on yeah. this one. Plus, yeah. Yeah. there are going to be like a ton of Star Wars movies in the 90s. It's true. Yeah. So, it's they're working on it right now. He just had to get Now that he's done with Howard the Duck, and that can go off and be its own success. Yep. It, we're going to get Star Wars movies like every year. And I feel like George Lucas has other lovable characters that he can create and give us forever. Yeah, so I'm going to go with Star Wars. Star Trek is a little more adult. It is, it you know, is, Star Trek Next Generation is, it's not is even fun. great and all. That's a cool idea, but it's not fun. Star Wars. Star Wars. Like, yeah. I am Definitely. curious to see what happened before episode four. Like, I wish someone would get on that because yeah. I'm sure it's going to turn out amazing. I think first he's going to do seven, eight, nine. Yeah. And then he'll go back yeah. and do, do one. one, two, three. Uh, and, I, and one will probably be the strongest. I think probably. they screwed up already. Return of the Jedi was Revenge of the Jedi, and then they had to rename it the last Jedi minute. Jedi don't get revenge. So my poster that's up doesn't even mean anything. You i got to tear that thing down yeah. and throw it away. Throw it away. It's away. clearly just worthless yeah. now. So no, i, no, I got to say, can sell it Star like Trek... <laughs> nobody's going to buy a stupid thing. So Star Trek... They, they, they've they just expanded. They now have a second franchise going mm -hmm. off the same thing. They've got a successful chain of movies that are still going strong, Not and we've it. got more coming. So the the comic book is running solid. Uh, I think it's got a primetime view slot for for the, the next generation. I'm going with Star Trek on this one. I know Star Trek fan club and all, but... Star Wars, I think they're I think they've they they're a one trick pony and they've played their trick. Nope. I think anything else after this is just going to be lame, like the Ewoks show. So Star hey. Trek, I'm going hey. Star Trek. No, I like, I like the Ewoks. Ewoks show. Yeah, they're fuzzy and they make me feel good. He's gonna yeah. be ticked when there's a Star Wars movie every year for the next twenty years. They can't make a movie every year. That's unheard of. Yeah. You gotta have it years in awesome. between. I mean, All right. Well, I think I think year. the majority is voting Star Wars on this one. Let's but Jennifer, it. I still want to hear your opinion. What do you think? Well, I did go see Star Wars, but I was busy sucking face with my boyfriend in the back row the whole time. See, but I Asian. had a good time, so Star Wars. I'm going to be the outlier then. I guess Star Wars takes it. Thank you so much. Whoever Yay. you face. Yay. Well done, Matt Ackerman from Denver, Colorado. Oh, right. I love Matt. Uh, so we got Robin Sparkles from Vancouver, Can. No, no. Uh, and it's oh, wow. Gem and the Holograms versus the Wonder Twins. Ooh. I like it. It's not bad. Those are both not for bad. kids. Now, no, Gem. Now the I mean, this one I know. Gem. 
Oh. Why okay. gem? Truly yeah. outrageous. Yeah, but the Wonder Twins can activate and make things together, yeah, like, they, like water. And well, care. okay. All right. Well, if Jennifer knows this one, tell us about Gem and the Holograms. The Gem, the Gem, Gem and the Holograms are a totally rad band uh, led by Jerrica, and she has this rad earring, and she can synergize with synergy and turn into a totally awesome rock star who is pretty much my hero. So, um, she wins. Who are these Wonder Twins? Children? They sound like children. Adults can be twins. I guess that's true. Wes, tell us about the Wonder Twins. They're not children. <laughs> Are they not children? No, and they have great hair. I like hair. And they have a great unitard. And they, uh, as a boy and a girl. Unitard. And they, they, uh, they become things together. Like a family that fights crime. How about incestuous? Do they become that? Why do you? Did you pay? Her like? You can go. Okay, we don't need. This is a dude no, party. No, I think it's a dude party. I think she's contributing nicely. I think. <sighs> Jim. I think she's a keeper. Truly, our age. Oh, look what at else? This one. What else can they do? What are one and twins? It's Zan and Jaina. Yeah, uh, Zan they and bump Jana. fists, and one of them can take the shape of any animal. Yeah. And the other one can take the shape Elements. of any uh, thing. I think it's because he can become Elements? a bucket of water, so he gets the bucket and the water in it. It's true. Anything that's not alive, but he can make it come to life. So, so what do you guys think? Like, Jem can take the form of awesome. Yeah, but the Wonder Twins can be like, hey, I'm a guitar, trick Jem into playing her, and then mid-solo, turn into like a sword and cut her. I just was sold. What is he talking about? I just, I totally bought that. Surprise! True. Not a guitar, sword through your face. Yeah. Wonder Twins. Wonder Twins for me. I think the, I think my vote's going with the Wonder Twins. That was a pretty convincing argument. It could be like shape of guitar, and then shape of sword, and yeah. then shape of Jem's death. See, if yeah. you use facts, um, it's so clear. But can they clear. do shape of hit single? Yeah, I no. That's not I, a I'm, thing, so. Exactly. Jem wins. I'm kind of on board we, for this We Jem don't thing. really I listen to my K-pop, but I'm sure it's nice in Japan. Listen to what? K-pop. What's that? It's What's a thing. K-pop? It's this really great thing. That I'm thinking about doing with my boyfriend, Wait, what? my girlfriend. <laughs> Her name is not. So, uh, so we're done. <laughs> we're done with this with the Secret Wars. Uh, thanks for writing in. Please write in next week, where we uh, uh, talk about your 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 favorite fictitious characters and bouts of death. Yeah, and it's awesome. Yeah. So just as we promised before, here is our exclusive interview with Mr. Jack Kirby. And we'll get back to you after these messages. They're coming from all corners of the universe to a Burger King near you. The Superpowers Cup Holders. Only Burger King puts them under your child's command. When they buy a soft drink, they can get a Superpowers Cup Holder to play with for just $1.19. Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Dark Side. $1.19 each. Collect all four while you can. Because the Superpowers team is headed for other galaxies. This summer, take the ride of your life. Dodge bullets. Leap from skyscrapers. And survive 127 blazing minutes of non-stop excitement. Welcome to the party! All in 70mm 6-track Dolby Stereo oh. that will blow you through the back wall of the theater. Die Hard. Rated R. Exclusive engagement begins Friday, July 15th in selected cities. I was given one small section of the entire comic book. That's all I was allowed to do, I remember. And, and, and it wasn't enough. Uh, I had to be the creative force be, behind the entire thing, and that was impossible uh, for a beginner, certainly, anywhere. And so I, I left the studios and began to do my own superhero stories. is the Armed Forces Radio Service. A side door opens, and a frail young man steps into the laboratory. 
Don't be afraid, son. You're about to become one of America's saviors. Calmly, the young man allows himself to be inoculated with the strange seething liquid. There, it is done. Now to watch the reaction. The people in the observation room gape in wonder at the scene before them. Look, he, he's changing. It works. It works. It is working. There's power surging through those growing muscles. Millions of cells forming at incredible speed. Behold, the crowning achievement of all my years of hard work. The first of a corps of super agents whose mental and physical ability will make them a terror to spies and saboteurs. We shall call you Captain America, son, because like you, America shall gain the strength and the will to safeguard our shores. I found a way to help the war effort by portraying the times in the form of comic characters. I was saying what was on my mind. Hey, thanks for hanging 10 and watching Jack Kirby and Stan Lee do those interviews. Stan, Jack, thank you guys for taking the time yeah. to do and, those interviews with us. And Frank. Yeah. And Frank. That was, oh, Frank Miller. Yep. Awesome. Frank hey, so. word of advice. Talk to Hollywood. See if you can write a Robocop movie. I bet it would be the best movie ever. Anyway, here we go. This is the last segment of the show. This what is it? The Hall of Justice. Oh, Justice. We just kick back. Hang ten, maybe open some brewskis, order a pizza, and just talk about what's on our minds, what we've been reading, chowing down. Maybe we talk about some indie books, you know, like TMNT, Dark Horse Comics. We talk about some more dude on dude stuff, like, like what's going on here. Anyway, so when did you come to our country? Um, like five, five days ago. Your mm -hmm. English is yeah. not very good. Oh well, I've been trying. Give me another two days. You'll need more days. I'll be fluent. This is slower than I usually learn. What magazine did you get her? A good one. Uh, uh, we do have some, some questions. Um, All right. Um, Let's Matt, go to viewer questions. Yeah. Matt Wood, uh, this is a frequent question that we get. Matt Wood from uh, uh, New York, New York. So thank you, Matt, for uh, writing in. He wants to know uh, when we're going to start opening up phone lines. So. Uh, people can start interacting with us live on the show. Mm. Um, and again, you know, we are we are looking into it, and um, and uh, just keep track. Uh, stay tuned for future episodes, and uh, you know, stay tuned and see our progress. So, uh, once we do have a phone line, I hope it does happen. I uh, will we'll let you know what number to call into, and we'll be able to interact with them live. I think that's instead the of waiting future. for the uh, live interaction through the phone. Yeah. Yeah, I think that is the future. Yeah, everything's gonna go there. It's immediate. You can talk to one fan at a time instantaneously on the phone. Get them up on the screen. Talk to them. Yeah. That'll change the entire show. That'd be amazing. I am, I am all for it. We just got to gotta convince our producer. She's uh, cranky. So They had something like that in Back to the Future, didn't they? Uh, With the Japanese guy? What was the Japanese guy? Fun fact, that guy was my uncle. Oh, Which Japanese guy? You know where he gets fired? Oh, the movie that comes out in like eight months? What, do you, what are you dressed too. as then? I just have my jacket on. Her uncle get, gave her movies, a cut We get movies the film. before you guys do. Yeah. Oh, he did? Yes, we, oh. yep. Oh my god, you have Back to the Future 2 here? Japan is better. Wow, I love Korea. Oh. I've, I've only heard of Back to the Future 2. It hasn't come out in the U.S. No, yet, so we're behind the times. Oh, but it came out in Asia. And when That's your uncle you're Apparently. is in the movie? It's awesome. Wow, and you're, yeah, your uncle's in the movie? Yep. Yep. Wow. So she knows all about it. That would explain oh, yeah. how she knows these things about mm -hmm. this thing that hasn't come and, out and yet. It's a More user submitted stuff, right? Terrible yeah, movie. Yeah. So Back to the Future Two is not as good as Number One. I love the first. We'll movie. see about that when it comes out. Not yet. In the future. <laughs> I don't know, Doc. You know what they should never make a sequel to? The Terminator. No, no that's no. 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 I mean, that would be really bad if they made a yeah, sequel to the Terminator. I don't think that's even a possibility. No. I think that it was, the story ended. They have no more story to tell. Yeah. Like they got lucky with the so. Alien sequel. Yeah. Yeah. But Terminator is like, how no. do you improve on that? You, you know, know what I think has a big future? The Abyss. That's gonna. That would be huge. Huge franchise. Well, uh, another another question um, from from Chester Mannion from uh, Tuscan, Arizona. Or Tucson, sorry. Tucson. 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 Uh, I'm a big X-Men fan. Uh, good, good. Uh, 
But I feel like uh, Marvel doesn't appreciate the X-Men as much as they do Spider-Man and Hulk. I know Lucas is a big X-Men fan too and wanted to know if he thought that the uh, Wolverine miniseries that they did in 1982, if Marvel should uh, give Wolverine another shot at a solo series. And guys, uh, a spoiler alert for you guys watching, uh, but next week we are going to show you an interview with uh, X-Men writer Chris Claremont. And I did talk wow. to him behind the scenes, and he did say that there is another Wolverine solo uh, series in the works, and it's going to be launching sometime this fall. So I know that's he really exciting. Marvel oh, Comics. I know he's a solo guy, guy. Yeah. and I think what Chris Claremont and and, yeah. and, oh. and those guys did was huge. Oh God! But let's face it, X like like the whole thing about Wolverine is him being like I'm a loner, but really he belongs on a team. They should add him to like just go crazy like they did with Beast. Add him to the Avengers. Hear me out. Wolverine on the Avengers would be like Beast on the Avengers. It'd be cool. It would like no. shake things up. Is no. that blue guy? Yeah, yeah Beast. Put, ex, put Wolverine on the Avengers and things would be cool. Don't I put Spider-Man on the Avengers. No. That'd be dumb. But no. that's what I think. Spi Spider-Man is a character that like, uh, you know, obviously he's the greatest character ever. But you can't, I mean, you can't screw up Spider-Man. Like, how do you screw up Spider-Man? I don't know. You'd you know? have to do something crazy like clone him or... Cloning Spider-Man would be... Well, no. That would actually Cloning. be awesome. If they clone Spider-Man, it gives us more Spider-Man. Best That's character right. ever made. Marvel, take our idea, clone Spider-Man. It would make an awesome series. Does he fight a guy named so. Rolled Up Newspaper Man? You need to stop with that. The only way you catch... I saw how you catch insects. I saw that documentary, Karate Kid. Yeah. I know how you catch them insects. You know what's up, wax on, wax we off. We know what you do. Yeah. I know you catch those insects. Good source of protein. All right. Chopsticks are hard to use. I'm just glad in 1988 we finally extinguished racism. Finally. Like, as a culture. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, well, hey. I want to go back to Japan. Okay. Badly. Uh, I, got, I got another fan question. This is from Claire Bennett. Uh, she's writing it from Denver, uh, New Jersey. She asks, I love how you guys focus on comic books uh, from DC and Marvel, but uh, I'm not a fan of either. Uh, what comic book should I be looking for when I go to the comic shop for the first time? And this is a, this is a girl. Claire, you don't oh. exist. Denver's in Colorado. You are a liar. No, the Denver, end. New Jersey. It's a girl. That's not a place. No. Honey, also, no girls read comics. So this is clearly, clearly lies. And if they do, they, should, they read like that proof of stuff like ElfQuest. Yeah, ElfQuest. <laughs> you don't read ElfQuest, all right? <laughs> it's a man's book. You, it's a man's it's industry. It's a man's okay. book. Let, let me just don't go back Elfquest. to this. Don't There's a girl... Yes. Who reads comics I need to talk to her. in a town so that doesn't to exist? Guys. Emily, stop Emily. reading Claire. comics. Claire. Claire. I'm sorry. Claire, whatever your name is, stop reading comics. Boys will never like you if you read comics. What's the one with the aardvark? And it's like Conan, but it's an aardvark. Unless exactly. Indie books don't matter. Sexuals. I, I mean, the X-Men books are where, they're at, where it's at. Uh, unfortunately, there wasn't X-Men books that came out this week to talk about. But, uh, Claire, you really got to look into that. I mean, I feel like they're bringing in more females into the cast. I feel like they're, they're moving forward to introducing comic books to the female uh, audience. You know what would be so interesting? You, if, boobs, you know what would be interesting? Today. If there was a character like Jen in the X-Men, if they added a character like that to the X-Men. Like a prostitute? No, like a Japanese girl. Oh, like a Japanese, Japanese teenager. Prostitute. Marvel, like, here's an idea. Integrate Jen into the X-Men, maybe as a sidekick for Wolverine. Teenage Japanese girl. Oh, can't yeah. go wrong with wow. that. I'm glad that All we're right. broadcast in, in Hollywood because I, I think people will maybe pay attention to us, you take some Marvel? notes, make some changes. I mean, we got letters from New York, Marvel's in New York. Maybe they yeah. can do that. Yeah. You know, add like a Jen character. She can wear like the yellow looks good. Uh, she can wear yellow. And the pink. Right. Yeah. You know, and I think you uh, maybe give her a jacket. They're my true colors. And then Shining all of a sudden through. you got yourself a new X Man or X Woman. I mean, like a psychic for Wolverine is. Kind of like Batman and Robin, so. Yep, you could do I that. Know. I, I think could, the I best could totally think it would work. Like so what you're saying is Wolverine's a knockoff of Batman? Booyah! Oh! Don't listen to him. Don't make me rip out the underwear again. Okay, first of all, um, <laughs> Batman is nowhere near. I mean, sorry, Wolverine is nowhere near as to being a detective. Um, no. He's he's just a rage. So yeah, but he's not as good as Batman. Yeah. You, know, you know what also doesn't work? Okay, Batman has has a boy wonder. I think that boy wonder wears underwear. Okay. And that boy wonders underwear is very supportive to fighting crime. Point being this said is, is, is this is a fact. Let's uh let's change away from this thing but that's guys, gonna make me laugh too much. Uh, guys, I read Action Comics Weekly this week. 
Uh, Black Canary burned her clothes. She went back to the old uniform. She, what do you think, fashionista? Do you like the, uh, do you like the leather jacket and the tights, or yeah. do you like the the onesie? I think that's totally rad. I really like the tights. I think the fishnets are really working for her, and I would buy her album. Let's go fishnets. I think it's kind of kind of yeah. pushing it. All right, well. With the outfit, with the fishnets, I, I... But knowing the DC books I, yeah. right now, she'll be new to the next issue. No, I, I gotta say, I'm pretty disappointed in this. The Superman story, this is literally it. Superman doesn't show up, and it's just two pages. What? Yep. You don't even get to see him in, like, nope. his spandex suit? Nope. That's stupid. I was kind of disappointed in that. Um, I read yeah. Justice League International. Uh, it was interesting because this guy in gold is all about the Benjamins. He's all about the uh, the Jacksons. He doesn't want to lose money in trying to trade with the what? Earth. And so the Justice League just has to stall him out long enough for him to start losing money. He loses point zero 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 five percent and he quits. Um, it was interesting to me that they made Mar Martian Manhunter go to space. He's wearing a space suit, which I thought was... It's from Mars, though. Well, what I didn't ever think he would leave Earth, space? so... What would a Martian do in space? Right? Yeah. And uh, Gnort, the dog Green Lantern, makes an appearance in this, so that's wow. cool. Wow. Yeah. Nope. It's all about the big stuff happening in the Marvel Universe. That means mutant registration. Yep. All right. The X-Men faked their death. They're hiding out down under. But meanwhile, we've got the original five X-Men and X-Factor. All right. And they're still kicking ass. Yeah. They've got a giant, like, sentient ship. They meet up with the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants again, and they, the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants are like, hey, we registered, why don't you? And there's also Archangel, you know? Oh, look. Yeah, look, look. it's Archangel. He had, he had the Hulk in his little pants. Archangel, oh boy. Let's see this, look at that. That's some art. Look at that. for the guys. See that? Okay, keep talking, Jonathan. Well, I was gonna talk about a different comic. This one is probably the next big thing for Marvel. I see movies, I see cartoons. This is the next big super team. Yeah. While the X-Men are kind of tanking, um, this one, Strike Force Muratori, mm. is probably the, the hottest next thing. I mean, this is probably gonna be the biggest comic ever. Strike Force Muratori, um, you should buy this and put it away in a safe somewhere because it's gonna be worth a lot of money. Yeah. Um, back and board your comics, guys. Back and board your comics. Yeah. No glove, no love. And I'm telling you, uh, Listen to this team right here. This is going to be the biggest, hottest team ever. All right? It's going to be bigger than the Avengers, bigger than the X-Men, uh, yeah, bigger than New Warriors. We got it right here, Strike Force and Moratori. And uh, you'll, he you'll be hearing big things from these guys. It's funny. I was actually going to say the same thing about the 30th century's newest super team, the Wanderers. Uh, issue number two came out this week. It's by Doug Munch, so it's, uh, it's worth checking out. These guys, in this story, they're all dead. But they're clones that came back of the dead people who have to figure out how the people got killed. I'm telling you, Marvel, so, it's all about clones. Do it with Spider-Man. Take my advice. That one's free. I Clone Spider-Man. I don't know. Uh, and I, I got to say, I mean, I know I'm playing the, the low card here or whatever, but um, one of the chicks actually has a starburst coming out of her uh, privates. Um, I don't know what's going what on in the story, really, because this is issue two, so we still have a ways to go. But uh, DC's The Wanderers... It's going to be the next big thing. This is going to be at least as big as the green team, Team Millionaires, uh, way back in the 60s. It was an older book, but this is definitely going to be awesome. Its character designs are incredible. It's pretty spectacular. This guy hair reminds yeah, me of mine. His claws coming out of his fist. Who would have thought of that? It's crazy. Also, with got the, four. That's better than three. With just no. over 10 minutes remaining, I have to point out the shadow came with a suggested for mature readers thing, whereas the Flash, uh, titled The Flash Vandalized, they actually uh, inject him with speed, methamphetamines, um, which in turn kills his speed powers. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, he goes super, super fast for a very short time, uh, and then his crazy wife ends up uh, selling all of his stock and crashing his Ferrari oh, and um, doing some bad stuff. So the Flash vandalized. I was surprised it didn't come with a for mature audiences. The drug aspect is, uh, I mean, I'm all for nudity in comics. That's cool. Like Jeez. the art form is amazing, but some of the drug stuff is maybe a little bit too far. And I know they, they did the whole drug storyline with Speedy being a drug addict of heroin, but Flash being on speed is uh, it's a bit much to handle. I don't know that I I don't know that I'm down with that direction for comic books. Yeah. John, I'm actually John Byrne did something. I'm literally actually reading this right now. 
There's I'll, be, a, I'll be back with you guys. In it's crazy. Years. There are fewer words in that book than I'm used to in comic books. Hmm. There's only about twenty thousand speech bubbles rather than the thirty thousand that I'm used to. So there's not uh, there's not that much story to get through. It should be a pretty quick read. I don't know. Wow. I gotta say I'm really excited for this summer's movies. Though we have a whole bunch of awesomeness coming out. I'm really stoked for um, Die Hard. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, that's the, the movie with the guy from Moonlighting. Yep, yep. Uh, I don't know Bruce if that guy's a star. Wills, Bruce Wills is. I saw his Miami Vice movie. episode, and eh, not I a star. Do, I do like Alan Rickman though. Yeah. His voice is really commanding. Now that's a comic book they should make is Miami Vice. I see that franchise going on forever. Yeah, but the writer of that would probably be big doofus. Total tool. But I mean, to, to just to spark the discussion or whatever, July 1988, it's an exciting time for yeah. comic books. We've got, we've got the Ghostbusters sequel coming out. We've oh. got The Flash potentially getting his own TV show. Did you guys, see, did you guys uh, see Big? We've got... Oh, did you see Big? Big was That's good. Big. It had nothing to do with comic books, but yeah, I saw it. Did you see Roger Rabbit? <laughs> see Roger I didn't see Roger Rabbit. Roger Rabbit was good, too. I like uh, Roger Rabbit. Did you see Action Jackson? I didn't see no. Action Jackson was no. good. Speaking of movies, I think we just need to reiterate to... Tell our viewers to write in to Warner Brothers because this whole Mike, Michael Keaton thing is just—it it shouldn't happen. It's it, not gonna fly. I'm with the sorry, real producer Jennifer. It's bullshit. That's right. I said it on TV. Where Michael is, Keaton where, should not be Batman. It just cost us our pizza check? party. Oh, quite possible. Where is she? You just cost us our pizza party. I want pizza. There'll be no pizza. I don't buy us pizza. Me no pizza. I got some quarters. Yeah. I'll, I'll, We've lost one. I wanted to meet the executive producer Jennifer. All we have is Asian hooker one. Hooker is such a derogatory term. Sorry, prostitute. She's a lady of Not the a night. Hooker. She's a fancy lady, okay? Jennifer oh my is a fancy lady. Here in 1988, you'd have to pay at least $7 for a hooker. And I'm only getting paid five. It's true. I didn't. So you're not like a really fancy lady. You're like a you're like a lady that you <coughs> bring to bless a lunch. Oh, bless Curses. You. Like some tea. Oh god. I think he's allergic to you. There's some blood in that. <sighs> he might be allergic to testosterone. Sitting so, too close to the fire. There is, there is quite a bit of testosterone. But again, July 1988. It's an exciting time to be alive. It's one of the best times ever to be reading comics. I have no doubt that all of these are going to end up being worth. Quite a bit, except for Crimson Avenger. Crimson Avenger was just terrible. In comics, you're just going to keep getting more popular. Like, I don't yeah. see an end to it. Nope. You know? So, do you hear that, Gregory Barbie? You just let go of a gold mine. They'll be selling in the millions for at least the next 30 years. All right, there, there's in an the idea. Millions. Though. We've got a gold mine. We've got 30 years worth of millions. Guys, I say we put all these in a time capsule or like a vault. And we know that we're going to be super famous in the future, and we're going to be doing this forever. Yeah. So I think we should put all these in a vault, and we should give them away in 30 that. years. That's a really good We're well, going to give, give you away. a gold mine in 30, 30 years. years. No, let's, let's, yeah. well, 30 like, years is too long. Like 27. 27. Do you think all of us will have, like, kids that look similar to us let's that hope can you give don't. away this? Oh, that'd be weird. Let's I'm not playing with I just hope we can adopt. Even though a good head of hair runs in your family, let's hope that your kids are good. Um, yeah, I say in 27 years, you guys give these away. Okay. Yeah. All right. How do you to do that? To end out the show, we've got about seven minutes left. Oh, so we're, we're going to give away, the, we're going to seal these comics up, and we're going to give them away in about 27 years, give yeah. or take a week. Uh, so that's something cool that we can yeah. do for our viewers. So stay and hopefully tuned. by then we'll have a 1-900 number that you guys can call, or a 1-800 okay. number because we're so famous Crush we don't fingers. need your money. Crush your fingers um, in that case. Good point. Let's, uh, because it's 27 years and we're going to give it away, let's do predictions in 30 years. Good we'll do God. In 30 years. Uh, what's, what's your prediction for 30 years from now? I've got a funny one. All right. Girls will read comics. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no, 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 a better one. Yeah, it is a good one. Um, Stupid. You know that little nerd thing in San Diego you dragged me to? Yeah, that's my like, Yeah, comic -Con. I have an yeah. even better prediction. That'll be popular. <laughs> <laughs> It'll never happen. Actually, It'll it never happen. No, we didn't. We didn't talk about it in the news, but they had they had a uh, quite a bad amount of people there. How so many? A lot. How many? Like, How many do you think? Like probably like more than twenty thousand people. We I think, that, that I think they had I about library. twenty one thousand. Yeah. What? Twenty one? What? So about twenty one thousand. Well, it's, it was actually was only half that amount. Half of it was the attendees' moms. Dropping them off. Twenty-one thousand people in San Diego. High <laughs> five for democracy. The uh, the actual the actual attendance well, was about. I mean, 7, did your did your mom did your mom take you to? The it's just a way to save gas. Don't comic comic make it uh, weird. My mom's dead. Thanks so oh. much for that. I, 
Wow! It's probably something you should. There should be a sad wing. Wow! There we go. So sad thanks for that. Mom jokes. It's okay. I I am also an orphan. Oh. Guys, they in were killed by 30, Godzilla. I would say that Godzilla is a real threat. Thirty years. Michael Keaton will go down as the worst Batman. Uh, I, no, it can't happen, guys. Write it in your letters. If you guys let it happen, it's on you. It's your fault. Yes. It's your fault if Michael Keaton is I Batman. I think there will be ten more Star Wars movies. Um, the Ninja Turtles video game will be way too easy. Uh, they will make GI Joe movies, which will win Oscars. I agree. Yep. I agree with that. And. Hmm. There will never be movies with people and dinosaurs on the screen together. Nor should no, there be. No, there shouldn't be. It's an be. abomination You're just of just stating the obvious. Well, Obviously. Now, what about an Avengers movie? Would they ever do that? Okay. No. 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 They should. Oh. No. So, so, and in 30 know, years, okay. gays will be able to marry. Oh. No. <laughs> it, <laughs> cost, it cost $17 million to make... Superman 4, Quest for Peace. And that and was that a good was film. one yeah. superhero. Right. The Avengers, right. there are at least seven of them. I don't know math, but seven times 17 is at least 100 million. And that's way more money than anybody has yep. at all. I mean, you could go and hit the most famous rich people right now, like Rupert Murdoch, and you still won't come up with that kind of a paycheck. No Maybe way. Michael Jackson can find it. <laughs> Michael Jackson doesn't Here's read one. comics. He'll Michael Jackson hands forever. them out. To get uh, children to because come I to love his indies. Concert. That's and what I, he I, did back in the because I love in the underdog. 1988 right now, um, Michael Jackson will be the biggest sex symbol. Absolutely. But Sega oh will goodness. also be the most popular console. Oh, oh okay. okay. Sega will Sega's overtake Nintendo. Yes. That's like the new one with the attitude. Yeah. Oh, okay. no, they will become the oh. biggest console seller. No, I, th I, I think games. Nintendo. They they put out more games, and I I. I think they're here to stay. But they're uh, hardcore gamers. That's for hardcore gamers. Nintendo's for hardcore. I'm talking about the indie stuff. Like, wow, indie. Uh, Your mom won't let you play it. But right. you got to play it after See. midnight. you got to okay. sneak and unscramble the cable. Um, well, I think with this new uh, X-Men cartoon, I feel like their day is coming. And I feel like, you know, they're going to have big budgeted movies. And there I will feel never be an X-Men movie. No. Mark no. my word. Who's no. going to play that? There never be an no. X-Men movie. I, 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 think, I think Mel Gibson would actually make a really great movie. It won't be Bruce Willis. He's not a star. Um, nope. Wills? That, that Die Hard Bruce movie, Wills. I'll see it, but I don't think Die Hard is going to be a big no. hit. Yeah. It's about a dude trapped There's in a, a yeah, tower. How much can really happen in one How one many building? popular movies is it where it's one person trapped in like a house or a tower and bad yeah, guys? I've already seen that. I've like, seen that. Think of a new idea. I don't know. All right. All right, guys. We're with about four minutes left. Really quickly, let's do a lightning round. What do you think would be a cool comic book? Jennifer. Gem. Gem would be a cool... Okay. That's it would be truly outrageous. Would you go crazy if they ever made a movie? Absolutely. And there's no way you can mess that up. Hollywood at all. never make a movie. Lucas. Where do you find um, What do you think would be a cool comic book for next year? For next year? Yeah. Geez. Like, what's something cool that they could do that would be cool? I, they could do. I think they should just do something totally fresh and new. Uh, maybe uh, go back to the, the fantasy aspects of things. Uh, maybe like a, a, a team of heroes on a distant planet uh, with machinery and stuff and magic everywhere. I don't know. I, I think they could, they could do something with that if they put a lot of thought into it. Yeah. Jonathan? With wizards. Yeah, I think wizards. he fell asleep. Um, a cool comic book would be like if they took um, like a police officer and they killed him. Right. But he comes back. Yeah. And he's respawned as somebody who takes out bad guys. And it goes after the people who killed him. He's gay? Maybe he's a sniper. Maybe he's a, a military guy. Now he's a police officer. They kill him. He comes back. Actually, that sounds awful. No, it should be like the X-Men, but different. Um, they should have a Wolverine type guy. They should also have a, no, that'd be an awful comic too. Um, no, it should be like a green cop with a giant tail fit. No, that'd be an awful comic too. No, a good comic would be a team of like high schoolers, like a generation of 13 year olds. And nope, that'd be a dumb comic too. Um, you know what? Just stick to reading X-Men. Yeah, X-Men. And Avengers. X-Men. And uh, again, Marvel put... Wolverine on the Avengers, but not Spider-Man. I don't know if I like this. clone Spider-Man. I don't know if I like this wild storm of ideas you're coming nope. up with. The uh, image like. is just awful. I don't so like this It puts a horrible all. image in your head. Dark Horse. Hey, 
Uh, I think you got a good idea with that green team thing of the trillion. I love that. I, I want to see was, that. That was your idea. I was, I was a good idea that I'm going to make, and I'm going to like it. You also got me thinking about this future. 27 years from now, like hoverboards, Cubs will win the World Series. Jaws 19. You like Jaws? I love Jaws. I like Jaws. You I love Jaws 3. Yeah. No gag reflex. With Dennis Quaid. And uh, Japanese people will fire white people. Maybe. I guess. And that then, you know, happen. in 27 years, like, I think I'd have, like, a little garden in, like, San Francisco. And just, like, like little small fruits. And I'd live, uh, you know, Jerry has a, he's a firefighter. But he comes, he comes home because, like, there's stints of, like, months where he doesn't have to be at work. And we go to this little bookstore on the corner. We lost another one. I think a cool comic book would be one where there's like a few Supermen and they fight each other rather than just one. Because Superman wins every time. So wow. like make a few of them or they all fight. They That'd be fight cool. fight each other. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Why not? But they can't do that because of Crisis, you can't un... You like, it's true. There yeah, is only like, one. There's now, only one universe. So. They would never go back on that. Like DC would never go back and be like, nope, it's no. a multiverse again. No. Nope, it's not a multiverse again. We, we yep, got it squared away. We're going to stay no, with like, it. Wait, wait, whoa, 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 I think DC wins in that one. Like they have the tightest on. continuity. One multiverse, streamlined. Yeah. The one universe, the way it's supposed to be. They would, a, why would they go back on that? This is a big Ever. question, big question, big question. You guys know that Jerry is like my roommate, right? That's what I meant in 2017. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We yeah. got that. Like, because he, because Firefighters is, because I wanted to. No, I saw, yeah, yeah, Jerry. Yeah, I saw Jerry. Okay. Yeah, you got to you gotta work your way up. I get uh, it. Be, before we run out of time, guys, thanks for tuning expensive. in this long. Uh, we wanted to give you our P.O. Box address. Uh, so you guys going to want to uh, write in T to Marvel. vote for Danger Room. Team Marvel. OTC. Uh, Danger Zone. Uh, <laughs> give in your suggestions for Secret Wars. And any questions for us that we can talk about during Hall of Justice? And I believe, Jen, you have that address. Indeed. To uh, kids, ask your parents' permission before writing in. Yes, also, definitely. resign yourself to the fact that you'll never have a girlfriend. And Psh, submit girls your questions and suggestions nice. to the comic book show, OK to Read, on the air, P.O. Box 0627, Chicago, Illinois, 60616. And special thanks to our sponsors. Yep. Uh, House of Secrets. Yep. It's a local comic book shop right down the street here in Burbank, California that set us up with all of these amazing books. Mm. You guys should definitely buy plane tickets and fly out here to check out House of Secrets or if you live in Los Angeles area, take the drive. It's definitely worth checking out. Uh, Wes, do you have any secrets? Um, they're at the House of Secrets, okay. which is in Burbank, California. Mm-hmm. And, and Greg. Definitely yes, Greg. and definitely Greg. Thank you, Greg. Thanks, Greg. Please Thank don't you, Greg. beat Lucas up anymore. Even though you're a jock. And, and if you do, videotape it and then send it to the And address. probably would never associate with any of these losers. Thank you so much you're for making their day by buying them you're their stories. Painter. Don't pay her. You should pay her in freedom. And, um, of course, special thanks to Twin Galaxies that let us shoot in their arcade here yep. every week. Yep. They got some and nice machines. Be sure to tune in next week where we'll reveal the results to this week's Danger Room and show you yet another exclusive interview with X-Men writer Chris Claremont and more. And we will see you next week. Can you show me your underpants again? I just want to see yeah. what, like, Yeah, really let's bad. do that. Can let's I, do that. Can I leave now? We'll see you next week, guys. Bye. Unchain her. Twin Galaxies. <laughs>